afternoon, everybody. It is a gorgeous autumn afternoon here in Seattle, Washington at Husky Stadium on the banks of Lake Washington where the faithful look on. The Huskies today hosting the Utah State Aggies here at Husky Stadium. Utah State located in the Wasatch Mountain Valleys in Logan, Utah, and a long way from home and in a big-time college atmosphere here today against the Huskies who are hungry for a win following that 31-28 whipping last Saturday against Arizona. It was a tough evening, of course, for the Huskies to sustain because Brock Hewitt was knocked out of the game. He'll be out for another couple of weeks with a separated shoulder. Jermaine Smith, the cornerback, was lost as well. So you have some new guys there at quarterback. Marcus Tuyasasopo starting in only his second college game and Wandami Davis, who got a lot of plays last week against Arizona. And they have time to get it together, to find a rhythm, to find some momentum. Take a look at the schedule now as we approach the midway point of the season. Today against the Utah State Ball Club, 5-27 and 27 against current Pac-10 teams. 15 straight wins over a Cal team here at Husky Stadium on the 17th and October 24th against Oregon State, a team that UW has dominated, winning 20 of the last 21. Sonny Sixkiller joins us here in the broadcast, and this is indeed a pivotal point in the season. Absolutely, Kevin. They have three games to get it righted, so to speak. They've got a lot of young talent out there. They've got a young leader. Their main leader, Brock Heward, is down, but Marcus Tuyasasopo is really well thought of by this young squad. Take a look at him right here, Kevin. This young man completing 54% in 13 games. But you know, this guy is also a leader. He worries the Utah State defense because he can do so many things, running and throwing the football. You see right there, the first career start. Not a win, but a very impressive start. Well, the Utah State people tell us we would much rather see Brock Hewitt in there. He's a little more predictable <laughs> than Marcus Tuyasusopo, who can run the football, obviously pitch option, throw the football. Up front, they've got three huge guys who can bench press better Strong. than 500. And they got a middle linebacker that can bench 500, Tony Diamato. It just scares me thinking about all that weight. But Tony Diamato right here, number 46, a Butkus Award candidate. This young man is the heart and soul of that defense. And one thing to watch for today is his ability to get across the line of scrimmage in a blitz situation. Well, there are some changes, obviously, here at Husky Stadium, namely the kicking game. You're going to see Craig Holly kick off in his first collegiate football game, and you're going to see Joe Jarzinka attempt some field goals and point after. Hopefully, should the Huskies prevail here today against Utah State. Featuring Demario Brown, a fine running back out of Southern California. And, of course, from Compton, California, Willie Hurst, who picked up his first collegiate TD last week in the loss to Arizona. The Aggies and the Huskies from Husky Stadium in the action coming up next. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Husky Stadium. Along with Sonny Sixkiller, this is Kevin Calabro. Husky football is back with you this afternoon on a crisp autumn afternoon, 57 degrees, and the humidity down around 60%. And the forecast, partly sunny. And uh, for Utah State, a uh, big battle. Dave Arslanian is the head coach of Utah State now in his first year formerly from Weber State Jim Lambright the Washington head coach in his sixth season has had to endure a couple of weekends of tough sledding the loss on the road to Lincoln Nebraska's Cornhuskers here's Jarzinka with a kickoff return up to about uh, the 29 yard line and spilled and of course the Huskies had to endure a lot of uh, second guessing this week after the 31-28 loss to Arizona. Joe Jarzinka upended, and he will be doing the place kicking today for the Huskies as well. Marcus Tuyasasopo will get his second collegiate start, filled in for Brock Hewitt last weekend after Brock was injured in the Arizona game with a shoulder separation. Marcus Tuyasasopo, the sophomore from Woodenville High School, will lead the Huskies now. They'll bring Jawaran Hooker out wide to the left. Man in motion is Chris Jurgens, the H-back. And it's Willie Hurst alone back in the backfield. Long count. Marcus, blindside rush. Held, spun around at the 20-yard line. Stood up and then dropped down. Brent Passy, 6'1 sophomore. Strong side linebacker. Scoots around the block. And he couples with uh, Tuya Sosopo before Marcus knew what was happening. Let's take a look at the offensive set now for the Huskies. Elliott Silvers, Tony Coates, Brad Hutt. Ward and Dalen up front. The receivers and backs, Hurst, Jurgens, Meisen, Looker, and Hooker. Here's the give up the middle to Willie Hurst. Shoestring tackle made and knocked down at about the 25 yard line. And on the play was Tony Diamato and Brent Passy, and they'll be in on a lot of the action this afternoon. 
The defensive line, Hassel, Fia Fia, Fia Fia, and Smith. The Fia Fias are brothers. Passi, Diamato, and Eagle. The backers, Walker, Deco, Miller, and Garman. The defensive backs. To Yesusopo, hard rush, scrambling, throwing over the middle, just dumping it before he's corralled and knocked down back at the five yard line. Lindsey Hassel rushes Marcus to Yesusopo, who will be going up against the defense, Sonny, led by a coach on the sideline. He knows quite well Mike to Yesusopo, Manu's cousin. Well, Mike's got to be real happy with that defense right now. So the Huskies will have to punt and Ryan Fleming is back at his own 10 yard line. Tony Walker is the lone man back waiting at the 35 for Utah State. Three downs and out Utah State now trying to dispatch a man on the field late low snap short hop picked up by Fleming got off the booming punt spiraling back to the 20 taken by Walker juggled it now starts up the field spins away from one tackler gang tackle back at his own 26 yard line. But Scott Osk snapped the ball a low one that Fleming was able to scoop up and send into the air and then Scott hustles down the field to make the tackle. There is a flag down at the point of the play. Preliminary indication is dead ball foul and a personal foul against the Aggies. Well, they will back it up 15 yards. Sonny, I wasn't real surprised to see Utah State's defense come out as fired up as they have been. They are ranked eighth in the nation in rushing defense. It's not a bad football, defensive football team. Well, it's a great job by the defensive coordinator for Utah State to come out and get aggressive with uh, a young man making his second start. We'll set the lineups for you for Utah State here in a moment. Hard rush on the quarterback being pursued. Wanda May Davis comes in and spins the man around for the tackle. That was Brendan Jones, a big partner, who comes in on the tack. Todd Johnson was there, number 23, on the tackle of the starting quarterback. And you get a look at him, Riley Jensen. Ken Watts up front anchors that offensive line with Holbrook, Patutau, Lindsey, and Lance. The backs and receivers, Demario Brown, Aaron Jones, Bucky Orton, Robert Scott, and Adam Colbert. Dead ball foul. Personal foul. Here's another personal foul whistled on Utah State. And that will move the Aggies back to their own seven yard line. Riley Jensen will take over. He's a 5'10, 208 pound senior. Attended spring ball at BYU a year ago, but did not play. He'll fling one out here to the near sideline to Mario Brown. Pushed out of bounds at his own 12 yard line. You know, that was the wide receiver, Robert Scott, on the reception. And Wanda Me Davis out there in coverage. Wanda Me filling in for the injured Jermaine Smith, the cornerback. Knocked out of last weekend's game here against Arizona. Third down, 12 yards to go. Well, third and 12 now for Utah State. Ricky Brumfield is wide here to the near side. Tandem receivers to the left. Jensen stumbles at the five, writes himself. Hard rush, knocked down. Josh Smith. Man on a mission. Overwhelms Ricky Jensen back at his own two yard line. Now they run what they call an attack punt formation. In Aggieville. With Jensen doing the punting. But this time he's backed up deep in his own end zone. And this time they're going to go to their other specialist, Jerry Arguello. He will punt it out here to the 30. Jarzakis scooting around near sideline, trying to make the cut, knocked down at the 27-yard line. So Jerry Arguello 
who doesn't ordinarily get an opportunity to punt the football puts one off the side of the foot and the Huskies are in great field position down inside the Aggie 25 yard line. We'll be right back in a moment. Marcus Tuyesa Sopo now to quarterback the Huskies at uh, the 23 yard line of the Aggies. Back to throw and again rushed. Tried to set up, I think, a screen pass left side, but Willie Hurst had been knocked down and the pass sails over his head and incomplete. That was really well covered out there. Cam Smith, 52, Utah State. So far, Utah State seems to know what the Huskies have up their sleeve. Rushing, sacking the quarterback, and that time, no place to throw the football. So the Huskies on their first possession had to go three downs and punt. Marcus Tuyas is so far off to an 0 for 2 start, three yards rushing. Somebody jumped off. The Husky center, Brad Hutt, knocked down up front by Walter Fiafia. The officials yeah. will sort that out. Kevin, we talked about Utah State defensive front being able to lift a lot of weight. That young man, Fia Fia, benches over 530 pounds, and you can see Brad Hutt felt some of that. That's like you and I sitting in a golf cart, <laughs> settling. We've been elevated. And two of the up linemen are grad students, and Tony Diamato is a senior, so they have a great deal of knowledge and experience up front as well. Three penalties now assessed on Utah State thus far for a total of 26 yards in penalties. That seems to be the only way the Huskies have been able to move the ball here early, but it is early. 11.56 of the first quarter. Marcus checks to the line, turn the hand off to her, spots a seam, spinning, and knocked down at the 17-yard line. He appeared to have a hole to his left, but he spun back and tried to angle to the right, and there he was met by Lindsey Hassel. It looked like he did miss the hole there. You saw Tony Coates pull around to his right, and it looked like Willie Hurst just kind of misread where he was supposed to go. Get a look here, Tony Coates. It looked like it was meant to go outside, and he decided to break it up inside. Of course, Utah State there to make the play. Huskies now looking at a third and four deal. Marcus rolling out, gonna throw on the run, angling one into the end zone. Dane Looker was there, but overthrown off his fingertips and incomplete. So the Huskies now will elect to go for the field goal on fourth and four and Joe Jarzinka the junior from Gig Harbor will come on. They wanted to give Jim Skirsky an opportunity to just watch from the sidelines and felt like they needed an infusion here. So we'll see what Joe can do from the 25. The kick is up sailing high into the air and it's good. <laughs> and the Huskies have earned their first field goal of the year off the foot of Joe Jarzinka who's not wearing any special kicking footwear at all. He's wearing the same shoes he used a moment ago to dance away from tacklers on that punt reception. Huskies up 3-0 early. A 35-yarder from Joe the Toe. We'll be back in a moment. Well, the Huskies are out on top of Utah State 3-0 with 11-11 left here in the first quarter of play, and Joe Jarzinka kicks the field goal. He was all Pierce County MVP. Back his senior year at Gig Harbor because he played the soccer, lettered in soccer. And uh, he also obviously played football in about every position you can play. Now, this fellow, Craig Holly, is a junior from Bellevue Community College, and he has never kicked in a college football game. And he will be the place kicker this afternoon. His boot back to the 11 yard line and taken and run up the middle to about the 30 yard line. That's where the Aggies will begin play. Tony Walker on the return. Great snap, great hold. Ryan Militich right there holding Dane Looker, normally the holder, but little Joe doesn't care. He's just going to whack it through like he likes to say. One of those punch shots. You know, Craig Holly has never been on a football field before, Kevin, much less kicking. Well, he only sailed that one down to about the 11 yard line. Now the Aggies take over, just shy of their own 30. Riley Jensen, the quarterback. No flags fly, but Jensen pulls that ball away from center, and he's immediately wrapped up at the 25. The ball is charged free, but they'll rule it a dead ball. Josh Smith once again emphatically 
<laughs> rolling in there and creating some static for young Mr. Jensen. I think he jumped off sides, though, to get that action going. <laughs> he, might, he might have. That ball was very slow in coming from center to quarterback. I tell you, Josh Smith, though, in this first series, on the first series for the Huskies, very active on the defensive side. This young man has a lot of energy, Kevin, and he's getting after it today. Illegal motion penalty against Utah State, and it is uh, their fourth penalty of the afternoon, although it will be declined by the Huskies. There was a loss of about three or four yards on the play. It'll be a second down and 10, or actually second down and 14 deal now for the Aggies. Jensen with the turn and the handoff, and trying to glide off left tackle to Demario Brown who picks up a couple of yards on the play. Jeff Johnson, on Jeff Johnson there to make the stop for the Huskies. This is a good move by the Husky coaching staff. Start Jeff Johnson again. He had a pretty good game. He's getting a lot of snaps. Let Lester Towns rest that foot another week. Towns was in anguish of course two weekends ago against Nebraska. He was just unable to help the Huskies out on the field. Was not 100 percent. Played sparingly against Arizona last weekend and of course Johnson Got to start the first game of the year against Arizona State back in his hometown. Jensen back to throw. Riley gunning one out here to the near side and a great catch made. Ball jarred free. That's a free ball. Picked up by Burton. He's to the 20 down the near sideline and hit by the back flow and dropped at the 12-yard line. That ball was caught amid uh, three defenders. Aaron Jones had it. Then the ball looked sunny like it had been punched out of his hands. And there was Nigel Burton, Mighty Mouse. To sail down the field. Well, I was just going to comment on such a great throw here by Riley Jensen. The Aggies stepping up right here. A lot of time to deliver the football, but to Ray Butler, but the hit right there from the linebacker, allowing Nigel Burton to pick it up and ramble a little bit. Looked like Jeremiah Farms, number four, with the big hit coming in there. Nope. It was Brendan Jones, number 13. He put a lick on him, and now the Huskies have again the football down here inside the red zone. Where they've converted one for one this afternoon a moment ago on Jarzinka's 35 yard field goal. Hurst swings out wide left. Two yes to Sopo throw on the width of the field. Out there complete to Jarzinka. Darts by one tackler. Angling toward the end zone. <laughs> knocked down at the two yard line and he took a shot. Looked like an Aggie may have even come close to that face mask. Yes, but it did. Uh, I tell you what, every time Joe does something, this crowd's going crazy today. <laughs> Just a quick step there. See the clearing route allowing Jarziga just to settle down right in the little zone area there. He <laughs> did take a big whack. He is one tough customer. <laughs> so <laughs> the Huskies have it. First and goal to go. Joe's over there still talking about that field goal. Here's Toyas to Sopo. Far hash mark. Hand off to Willie. Spilled into the end zone. Touchdown. Willie Hurst go around in circles. Man, he did a somersault into the end zone, and the Huskies lead 9-0. Boy, Willie Hurst adds that dimension of speed. Kevin, you saw him hit the hole that time. Line did a great job, but really, number one, Willie Hurst with that explosiveness just leaping into the end zone. And here's Joe Jarzinka now for the point after. The snap, the hold, the kick. And he squirted that one off the toe and it went wide left. So the Huskies come up empty on the extra point and lead it 9 nothing here at home this afternoon. We'll be right back in a moment. Well, the Huskies on a Nigel Burton fumble recovery return to the 13-yard line, scoring two plays. And it took him uh, a very short period of time, under a minute. Willie Hurst with a two-yard rumble for the TD, but the extra point missed. It's 9-0 Washington. Well, you talk about the missed extra point. You think about jo little Joe going out there and doing it. It's very courageous, and he's got a lot of heart. But, you know, when you're running around running routes and running patterns out there on offense and you're getting banged around, I think it's real tough to regroup yourself and come out and settle down and kick an extra point. After all, how many guys can you remember that return kicks, punts, Kickoffs and then turn around and kick the football. I mean, it's it's unheard of. Here's Holly banks one high into the air again. This one uh, about the 20, spinning out to the 25 yard line is Emmett White.
Akeem Akbar is the man in the backfield now for the Huskies. The freshman looking on. He's going to try to contain the play outside, but Nigel Burton comes over to make the stop at about the 24 yard line. <laughs> well, I tell you, Utah State's doing some good blocking downfield. You see Ken Walker for the Huskies 54 coming into the game. But I tell you, Ken Watts, who wanted to be a Husky at one time coming out of high school, leveled him twice downfield. So, <laughs> hello, Mr. Walker. John Roberts now in for Demario Brown in the backfield. It looked like the Aggies were going to break the huddle. Then they got back into the huddle, and now they come out in formation with wide receivers to the right, and they used up way too much time trying to deliberate on the play. Huskies lead the Aggies nine to nothing. On the offense, five yards. Second and eleven for the Aggies. A delay of game is the fifth penalty on the Aggies thus far this afternoon. Of course, one was declined by Washington. Jensen brings out wide receivers to the near side. And Husky another one came off sides. Maybe Josh Smith drawn off sides. I think he was. The interior lineman on the left side of the Aggies lifted. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Damuni was off sides. Even so the Aggies back to their 15 son. I was just going to say, even though he wasn't down in his three point stance, once that tight end is set and they start the cadence, you cannot move at all. Next week, the Huskies here at home take on Cal. The week after, it's Oregon State. And then on Halloween, a game against USC down in Los Angeles. Jensen angling one near sideline. The pass broken up and beautifully done down there by Toure Butler. Butler had his back to the ball, made a swivel at the right moment and was able to deflect it away. Intended receiver Ricky Brumfeld. It looked like Brumfeld actually was open, had a little more time. He had a nice cushion with the sidelines, and uh, Jensen just didn't lay it out far enough for him to get to. And uh, as you said, Trey Butler, timing. Timing is everything on that defensive side. Aggies uh, 0 for 2 in third down conversion. This year, UW's opponents 29 of 61 in third down conversions. A little less than 50%. Is that is that a good ratio, Sonny? No, it is not. <laughs> Jensen taken down at about the eight-yard line. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> Todd Johnson once again in on the play. Man, he's been everywhere today. Josh Smith also the Husky defense showing a little bit of their quickness that they've seen in recent weeks from other teams right here against the Aggies, doing some of the same. Todd Johnson there on the little blitz, no one picking him up, and of course. Riley Jensen getting sacked. Fourth sack of the afternoon for the Husky defense. Jerry Argreo, the punter, again in his own end zone. And Jarzinka is the man back for the Huskies, who lead here 9 0. Argreo out of his own end zone. This one end over end, taken by Joe at the 35. Scoots by a couple of tacklers, trying to cut back Kent. Rolled down at the 32. Once again, the Huskies operate in Aggie territory. Leading 9 0. We'll be back to Husky Stadium in just a moment. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo going back to work here at Husky Stadium as Washington has the ball down at the Aggie 31 yard line. Washington leading Utah State 9 0 with Sunday Six Killer Kevin Calabro here on a beautiful autumn afternoon. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo with a turn, the handoff to Willie Hurst. Jitterbugging down to the 30. Flag flies, ball jarred free. Utah State has it. They're going to rule it dead. It'll be Husky football, but a flag on the play. Donald Deco comes over to make the initial stop on Willie Hurst. Is shaking that right arm a little bit. Willie doing a little shaking and bacon, but I think they called a holding on Dane Looker, the flanker downfield, trying to hold somebody up for Willie to get open. And Willie comes off with it appears to be the, the right arm, right shoulder bothering him. He had that bother him all week in practice. Yep. A few times he had to do the same thing. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. So they'll repeat the first down, but the ball will be backed up. Willie Hurst with a couple of carries, five yards and a TD this afternoon. 
But you do have coming in for him, Jason Harris, who has been out yep. with that nagging knee problem. And uh, have an opportunity here to see Jason Harris run with the football with Willie Allen. To Yesusopo, back to throw. Stops, guns it long. Out on the far side, man wide open. Diving out, extending to make the catch. Down at the six-yard line, Chris Jurgens. Sensational catch by Jurgens. And to Yesusopo gave that ball a ride. Well, he showed his arm strength on that pass, didn't he? He showed his accuracy as well. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo has got a very strong arm. They say Brock Hewitt has a strong arm as well. But right here, the key here, Kevin, is he's laying it out so that his receiver has an opportunity to make adjustments or dive to make the catch. 33-yard hookup and the ball marked down just inside the Aggies' 10-yard line. Dane Looker goes wide left. Harris, the man in the backfield for Washington. Fake handoff to Yesusopo, naked bootleg, 10 5. He's going to dance into the end zone for the touchdown. Marcus to Yesusopo. Showing some action to the left and then rolling out right. When you have a quarterback with all the skills, there he is, thinking the man above, but it's really uh, his natural, God given talents. You know, a nice little bootleg action here, letting him use his speed, get out around the corner and. I saw that work in practice. Now I saw it work in the game, Kevin. Good job. Jarzinka to add the extra point. Missed the first one of the afternoon. Leans into this one and gets it up into the air and pops it home. Jarzinka has four points on the afternoon, adding the PAT. And the Huskies cruising 16-0 with 6.09 left in the first quarter at Husky Stadium, where we, we return in a moment. Well, the Washington Huskies first get the ball in great field position and then it is capped by a Marcus to yes so we'll hook up to Chris Jurgens at the 33 a 33 yard hookup down to the 20 uh, or inside the 20 yard line and again the Husky score from the red zone kickoff to Emmett White run back to about the 27 yard line but again flags fly on the play. Little explanation for the head coach on the sidelines. Kevin, Utah State, three first down plays for minus seven yards. And not much of a gain here. That's Demario Brown running ahead, bouncing to about the 19 yard line. Kenny Walker, Skywalker making the tackle in there. You, know, you talk about Demario Brown coming in this ball game. He la he averages less than three yards a carry. Actually, the other back, Roberts, is averaging more and has more yardage. And yeah, Roberts is the man in the backfield now for the Aggies. Second and six. Here's the shovel pass and then flip back to the quarterback Jensen. And he's collared at the 11-yard line, dragged out of bounds. Guess who made the play again? Todd Johnson. Todd's having a big day so far. Riley Jensen, the quarterback, a little flea flicker back to him and throw down field, but great coverage by the Huskies that time. Wanda B. Davis and Teray Butler. There's no place to throw the football. I love these kind of plays. Ken Walker applying the initial pressure, but Todd Johnson not letting him out of his sights. I'm not sure if he had time to get rid of the ball if somebody was open. 16-0 Washington. Todd Johnson has three sacks this afternoon. The Huskies in total of Sack Riley Jensen five times. Jensen has trips to the left. And a wide receiver to the right, but no time. Here's Johnson again with his fourth sack of the afternoon. The sixth on Jensen. Boy, what's happened when they vacate the area? Todd Johnson's just got the green light. Nobody there to block him. You might as well go get the quarterback. Out of Bellevue's Newport High, Todd Johnson making a big time stop once again, having a great afternoon. See, no one there picking him up. You see 22 playing tight end, but nobody there outside to pick up Todd Johnson. Boy, what a nice little lane to sack a quarterback. So once again, the Aggies deep in their own end, and Jarzinka down now at the Aggie 40 yard line to receive the punt. It's up, and Jarzinka going to collar it at the 30. Cut back to the 20, leans ahead, 
And he's down at the 21. Once again, the Huskies in or around the red zone of the Aggies to start the campaign, leading 16 0. We're in the first quarter, and we'll return in a moment. Well, the Aggies uh, this afternoon have only been able to gain. Uh, I think they're still in positive numbers. No, they're in negative numbers now. They're in the red. And uh, once again, the Huskies have it in prime territory. Julius Yassisopo back to throw, throwing it up for grabs in the end zone. Intended receiver was Jawarin Hooker, but the Aggies have the football back. Touchback as the pass was snared in the end zone by Tony Walker, the cornerback. So the Aggies get it right back after Marcus went for the bundle. Well, Tony Walker's on great coverage here. Ball was really underthrown. There wasn't a lot of room to lead him. As you can see how far they are in the end zone, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Marcus Tuyasasopo couldn't lay it out for, for Jawarin Hooker to run to, and naturally underthrowing it gives the DB a chance to hang in there and make the interception. And Hooker came down heavily on the, the left thigh with Walker's helmet on it. Sonny, as you mentioned before the game, they had to take a, a great deal of fluid out of the quad muscle of Jawarin Hooker. Man trapped in the backfield, Demario Brown. Nigel Burton, the first man to get to him at the 16. And he is knocked down. Utah State in negative numbers now. 16, a negative 16 total offense. Classic gang tackling by the Huskies there. Burton. Lining them up, stacking them up, getting help. Well, you've got three wideouts in there, and Robert Scott for Utah State not picking up Nigel Burton, and again, easy tackle. Not a whole lot of blocking done by Utah State. Here's a pass gunned out to the near flat, and that ball was thrown with some zip to it, and it sailed right through the outstretched hands of Adam Colbert. Boy, the incomplete pass to Ray Butler down there in coverage. Well, we heard that coming in the ball game. Riley Jensen, sometimes he throws perfect laid out passes, and other times he just rifles the ball in there, and that time in a short turn in like that you got to give your receiver if you're going to throw it that hard Kevin throw it at the body don't throw it high talking about third down conversions again Huskies at 29 of 61 their opponents 29 of 61 what ordinarily is a pretty good ratio about 25 percent I mean that would have to be very good opponents third down conversion well ratio. Utah State coming in is at 28 percent you want to be up near 40 percent in your third down conversion so you want your opponents at 40 or less then if you're you playing good defense. Well, if you're playing great defense, you want your opponents down around 25. You're 25, right. Yeah, right. there you go. Flags fly again on the play. The Aggies have been guilty of a number of infractions already with 332 left in the first. Well start on the offense, five-yard penalty. You know, this is an offensive unit that has struggled this year, granted, but over the last couple of games, they have averaged 400 yards total offense against Sam Houston State and Oregon State. I mean, uh, the last couple of games they have been working effectively this afternoon. They, they haven't put a semblance of anything together. Well, Riley Jensen's averaging over 200 yards passing a game. And he's going to get at least 200 welts in this game if this thing continues. He is sacked for, what is that, the seventh time today? Yeah, he's going to rack up over 200 yards in sack yardage. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Johnson <laughs> comes in to make the stop. Well, this certainly is what the doctor ordered for the Huskies. I mean, this is a, it's an opportunity to rest some people, obviously, that are dinged up. Ewart, Jermaine Smith, and to get some young guys some experience and some repetition. And to give Joe Jarzinka an opportunity to kick the football and catch the football. Jerry Arguello, once again, will punt out of his own end. This is the third punt he's had to sail out of his own end zone. Jarzinka is now lined up even closer to the goal line, back at the 36. But this one spirals and drives Joe back to the 50, takes it over the shoulder, turns at his own 45. Hard cut, up the middle, slants 40. He's going to bounce outside, 20. Two men to beat, trying to cut back. Angles toward the punter, grabs it to 12, and finally wrestled down. I tell you, Joe Jarzinka, that time with a better punt from Utah State, they give him an opportunity to actually have some room to run. With those short punts, everybody's running down. You don't have much of a lane to pick up. Right here, you see Joe riding himself, going upfield, missed tackles by Utah State, and actually guys running by him. And right here, you see little Joe run right into the opposition and, and finally going down. But uh, I tell you, at least he had an opportunity to, to field the ball cleanly and, and run with some lanes. A return of 44 yards for fearless Joe. First and 10 now for the Huskies and the ball resting at the Aggies 12 yard line Washington leading 16 nothing. 
Willie Hurst back in the lineup. Here's the handoff to Willie. Willie going to break to the five. Going to take a man with him down to the two before a nosedive there. And brought down by Craig Miller. Nice explosive hole there. Willie Hurst really getting up there. Craig Miller, 13, is really a cornerback filling in for John Dale Carty, their other star right. on defense for Utah State. Right here, Willie Hurst right up the hole. See Donald Dyko missing the tackle again. Utah State's had a lot of missed tackles so far in this first quarter. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo has the Huskies up at the two yard line of the Aggies. The snap, the handoff. Willie Hurst trying to scoot around the right side, knocked down at the two yard line. Lindsey Hassel teaming with Walter Fia Fia on the stop. Now there's another guy, Lindsey Hassel. You know, we, they're strong up front. I tell you, the Hassel bench is over 550. Fia Fia. 5.30 and uh, Tony Diamato over 500. That's a, that's a lot of weight. Holy cow. I'd, I'd say go wide. <laughs> Don't <laughs> stick it in there. Dan Lookers, the wide out here the not, near side. It's Harrison Hurst in the backfield. Actually, Braxton Clement along with Willie Hurst. They'll give to Willie, and he'll drive to the right side, lean out, and score. Willie Hurst with his second touchdown of the afternoon, the third of his career, and the Washington Huskies on top, 22-0. And the Huskies will look for two points. Here's a great look. I love this camera angle. You can see all the blocking up front. See Elliott Silver's trying to get a helmet on somebody, but Willie Hurst just knifing through there, getting over that goal line. A couple of freshmen in the backfield that time, Braxton Clement and Willie Hurst, and it's Hurst that gets the score. Clement, of course, scored a touchdown last weekend for Washington. J.K. Uh, Scott in at quarterback here, Kevin. Huskies are going to look for two, and two yes, Sopo is the H-back with Willie Hurst in the backfield. This is an interesting look now. Scott will turn, fake the handoff, roll out right side, going to pass into the end zone. The ball was slightly underthrown. Miho Austin was the intended receiver there to the right side. And an incomplete pass. 22-0, Washington leading with 1.30 left in the first quarter, and we'll be back in a moment. Now the Huskies score again to make it 22-0, and the key play there was the 44-yard punt return by Joe Jarzinka down to the 12-yard line. Willie Hurst with the touchdown the second of the afternoon. Here's a good move by Coach Lambright right here, Kevin. They've got Jim Skursky in kicking off, number 14. Now Craig Holly got an opportunity, but he didn't sail anything inside the 15-yard line of the Aggies. Now Skursky will put a foot on this one and drive Walker back to his own end zone. He'll take it right at the goal line, cut back 15, along the near hash mark to the 30, and man, did he take a lick. Spun down to the 32-yard line, Wanda May Davis down there with a ringing blow on Walker. Ag Aggies got away with another penalty that they should have been called. Sam Blanche out there definitely got blocked from behind. Oh, oh Wanda, let's see that. <laughs> Them bells are ringing. <laughs> Walker kind of wobbling down there on the near sideline. Now Aggie's trying to get something positive going on the offensive end. Jensen turns the handoff. Nice little cutback and grinding ahead to the 40-yard line is John Roberts. That's the first positive gain today over a, a yard or two that the Aggies have enjoyed. Jerry Butler comes up to make the stop. It's a nice run by the redshirt freshman for the Aggies. Roberts, as I mentioned earlier, actually has more yardage than Demario Brown on the season. And right there, going to punish Teray Butler. If he's going to get tackled, he might as well lower the boom on him. That's a pickup of eight. Aggies down at their own 39-yard line. And they trail 22-0. Jensen turns and hand off. Guess what? Again, the Aggies are thrown down behind the line of scrimmage. Odell George, the 6'2 sophomore, comes in to make the tackle. Odell George has been getting a little more playing time the last few weeks, and he's starting to respond real well. Coaches like the way he is responding, and consequently, he's getting more playing time. Right there, just blowing across. I mean, the Aggie linemen are just no, no match right now for the outside rush people for the Huskies. 
Third down situation with the Aggies, Sonny. Third down and seven, and uh, they're 0 for 5 this afternoon in third down situations. They've been sacked three times on third down conversion opportunities. Jensen guns a pass over the middle. Down to the 42-yard line, and that will be the Aggies' first first down of the afternoon as Bucky Orton grabs that football and leans forward to earn another set of downs for the Aggies. So as the Aggies march methodically to midfield, trailing 22-0, the first quarter comes to an end. The Huskies in firm command here at Husky Stadium this afternoon. We'll return in a moment. Defensively, the Huskies have been superb. This has been just the first first down that the Aggies have earned this afternoon. Washington has sacked Riley Jensen, the quarterback of the Aggies now, seven times today. Here's the handoff. John Roberts trying to scoot around right side. Jury Butler drags him down just shy of the 50-yard line. Offensively, the story here today has been the fact that the defense has pushed the Aggies all the way back into their own end zone, and then Joe Jarzinka has done a number on the Aggies. Sonny with a number of yards returning at football, and he's also added a field goal and an extra point <laughs> in his new role as the, the kicker. We're doing his all-purpose yards. He's over 100. He's at 104 already for return yards and receiving yards. Jensen back to throw, stops, quick drop, throwing out right side, and the Aggies earn another first down. Now we're seeing Jensen with a Quick three-step drop and just gunning the ball out on the flat. Robert Scott with the reception there for the first down. But like you said, this is the best field position they've had today. And Riley Jensen, you know, a little bit more room to work with up here. Maybe go get that offense going for Utah State. Utah State now nearing positive numbers. Dave Arslanian, the head coach, formerly at Weaver State for a number of years. He was with Mike Price's staff over there, the, the current Cougar coach. Here's the handoff to Roberts up the middle. One man to beat. Oh, and Brendan Jones comes up to make the open field tackle at the Husky 35. And there is a flag down near Riley Jensen, who's checking and doing an inventory on his body parts as he drags himself up off the artificial turf at the 45. Not a real smart move right there. I believe it was Josh Smith going back there on the play action and just leveling Riley Jensen. See Coach Dick Baird there. All right, settle down, stay in your area here. Stay in the control a little bit. It's hard to tell a defensive player to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you want him to be out of control a little bit, don't yeah. you? You want him going haywire out there. But you got to do it smartly, though, Kevin. You can't do have picking up the cheap fouls, penalties like this. Well, you don't want to overrun plays Oh, right either. there. See, yeah. a little play action. Little, he was just following through on his fake. But you know, some defenders, when you're rushing in there, you got your head down. You don't know if he handed off. He's doing a naked bootleg, much like Marcus Tuyasa Sopo has done today. On the defensive team, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. You know, I don't totally agree with that. Looking at that replay right there, the guy, naked bootleg, coming out with his hands down. You don't know if he has the football or not. You're taught to get the quarterback. If he looks like he's got the ball, you go get him. Now, if he'd set up Kevin and fake look downfield with a, you know, with a arm cock, with an arm yeah. cock, with no ball, yeah, I, I could see that. Second penalty of the afternoon on the Huskies, and this one hurts because it's 15 yards from the end of the run, the pass play complete, and that moves it down to the 19-yard line of the Huskies. Jensen again, a quick drop, great protection, throwing left side and complete to the 15-yard line. Nigel Butler, or I should say, Nigel Burton in coverage there to drag down Robert Scott. Robert Scott just getting position on Nigel Burton plus being 6-2. Nigel being about 5-8 had a distinct advantage there. And a good throw that time by Riley Jensen. 22-0 Huskies. 340 left here in the second quarter. It's second and six now for the Aggies. They are one and four on the year coming off losses to Sam Houston State and to Oregon State. Jensen dropping back. Going to try to set up a screen here to the near side, but under through the intended receiver, and a flag flies down at the 20-yard line where it looks like the Aggies might have been guilty of a hold. They were trying to set up Demario Brown with a screen play to the left side, but the Aggies hold on the play, and so they'll be penalized. It, it looked to me like 57, Mike Lindsay, the right guard for Utah State, was trying to grab a hold of Jabari Issa, but... Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the side of the foul, repeat the down. 
That's unfortunate though for Utah State, Kevin. They had that set up perfectly on the outside here. Yes, they did. A lot of blockers out here. You see 57 right in the middle. And actually, he just kind of throws down Jabari Issa. And right there, you see the official right there on top of it. Mike Lindsay's a pretty big guy. He's over 300 pounds. Second and 21. Jensen back to pass. He's going to scramble out to the 20. Knocked down from behind. And he was able to get it just shy of the original line of scrimmage. Well, Coming like in to make the play was Odell George once again, Sonny, in on the action. Odell in there with the speed. You see that time, Riley Jensen trying to get out of there. I thought he had a lot more room to run, but Odell George really closed the gap. Nobody open again downfield on this play. See Jeff Johnson trying to hustle out there, but Odell wasn't going to have any of it. George, uh, the sophomore from Vista, California. Great pursuit. That's the way to stay with the play. George uh, was at Walla Walla Community College. Here's Jensen back to throw. Guns one over the middle. That one is complete. And the receiver is driven down to the 17 yard line. Bucky Orton makes the catch, but again, a flag is down. And this one near the line of scrimmage. Utah State picked up six, but again, they're penalized. This would be the, what, eighth penalty of the afternoon, but this one would be declined. No, I think the Coach Lambright wants him to take, take it? it. Yeah, that was his indication. Yeah, yep. I mean, it's another 10 yards. Get him out of field goal position as well, hopefully. Yeah. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of foul, repeat the down. That's a good point, Sonny. Utah State has an excellent field goal kicker who have yet to see use those talents. Brad Vaughn, who's at 12 of 13 this afternoon. Or I should say on the season 12 of 13 he's <laughs> hadn't had an opportunity to even step on the field today. You know if that call was on Mike Lindsay again the right guard for Utah State. I, what's happening I, I believe in the line of scrimmage in the thick of things down there. Jabari Issa has tremendous quickness for an interior lineman and he's wreaking a little havoc with those Utah State guys. Third and 26 now at the 35 yard line Utah State handing off to Mario Brown met by the Purple Gang and driven down to the 33 a gain of one or two on the play Marcus Hairston in on the play they're going to try the field goal be about 49 yards out a bond earlier this year against Oregon State missed one from 45 yards out he was two for three in that game but they want to get something positive on the board he's Brad about, Bond from Laguna Beach he's about the same size as our kicker <laughs> Jim little Skirsky. Joe's little Joe's five seven <laughs> and Skirsky doesn't say I'm much more than five nine. Now Bond's going to get a free kick. They get to practice that when he pulls it wide left. He kind of half heartedly put a foot into that. The flags were flying before he even stepped up to kick it. Utah State from the Big West Conference. Winner of the conference goes on to the Humanitarian Bowl, which is played in Boise, Idaho. Dead ball, ball start on the offense, five yards. And you just wonder who's in the Big West Conference. Well, you got teams like Boise State, New Mexico State, Nevada, North Texas, Sam Houston State. This is a big opportunity for them and their program, Sonny, to come in here and play before 70,000 or so people. Oh, yeah, they make a little money on this trip. But the one thing I haven't seen a kicker I think in Husky Stadium kick one from 54 yards in some time. And he had, he had his streak broken against OSU last week Kevin we had nine straight are going to go for the school record. He started a new one last week with three penalty backs him up now. To the Husky 44 yard line as Sonny mentioned a 54 yarder here bad snap bad hold bad play Huskies gobble it up they've got the football at the 45 yard line that was. Totally botched. I think it was a fake field goal, but the holder was only able to stand up, and then he was wrapped up and dropped down. Let's see here. Well, that was a bad snap. He had no opportunity, really, to place the ball or even get away with it. Huskies take over, leading 22 0. We'll be right back. So, after the botched attempt at a field goal, the Huskies take over from Utah State at their 45, and Tuyas Sopo goes quickly to work. Angling a pass out to the far sideline complete to Dane Looker who tied the school record with 11 receptions in game one and they went on the road against Arizona State on that move it looked like he's pretty much fully recovered from that deep thigh bruise he got in that game Kevin which uh, kept him out of a ball game or two a 
like to see the offensive line really work hard here. I know talking to Coach Lambright this week, he says Tony Coates has really kind of stepped his game up, and we need to keep an eye on at number 68 there, Elliott Silvers, and see how he's progressing throughout the day. Marcus goes to work. The handoff to Willie, skirting left side, spinning down inside Utah State territory and upended at the 44-yard line. Donald Deco making the stop on Willie Hurst. Willie comes into this game with 153 total yards on the ground. Joe Steele's freshman record set in 76 was 421 yards. Well, there's a reason right there that Willie's getting some good yardage. We had just talked about Tony Coates, and right there you saw him pull around and make a key block, allowing Willie to get downfield. But Willie's really nagged with that right arm. Kind of hurt him all week in practice. Elstrom and Looker, the wide receiver, stacked up right side. Here's the handoff to Jason Harris, a quick opener off left tackle, and Harris rumbles across the 35-yard line to pick up what I think is going to be a Husky first down. Donald Deco makes the stop on the healthy Jason Harris. It's good to have Jason Harris back. The Husky coaches need to have this man back with Maurice Shaw out with that back injury. But you see Jason right here. He's always had a nice step. He's always been explosive getting to the hole right there, hitting it right up the middle. And the offensive line is doing their job at this moment. Looker is wide right. Jarzink is the H back in motion. Wide left, Todd Elstrom. And the back is Jason Harris. First down and 10 for the Huskies. At the Utah State 34, Tui Asusopo back to pass, going to go to the post. There's Looker under the pass, makes the catch, run out of bounds to the one-yard line. Outstanding pass and catch, Tui Asusopo to Dane Looker. Tony Walker in coverage was beaten at the post. That's Marcus Tui Asusopo. One thing you do, or you teach your wide receivers as they come downfield, have a little separation from your defensive back, but also give yourself a little cushion to work with with the sideline. And right there you saw Marcus Tuyasopo lay it out to the far shoulder. Look at that tongue. I look like Michael Jordan throwing the ball here. All right. See it right here as it comes down to a perfect throw. And uh, Mr. Looker right there hauling in. No question who was on the hot route that time. Marcus had his eye on number 80 down the field the whole time. Here's the handoff. Jason Harris climbs into the air and tumbles into the end zone for another Husky tally, making it 28 nothing. <laughs> I don't know, he's been watching some of those old NBA replays, I think, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> seems old, doesn't it, with yeah. this, this lockout? It it seems, sure does. <laughs> seems like it's been a long time <laughs> since we've seen that action. Militich will hold. And Jarzinka once again to add the extra point. Head down, toe square. He pumps it through. So Little Joe adds the PAT and the Huskies lead 29 to nothing. Good golly. We'll be back in a moment. Washington leading 29 to nothing on Utah State with 10-18 left here in the second quarter play. Jim Skirsky is on once again to kick off for the Washington Huskies. But it was Joe Jarzinku once again and added an extra point. And he's already kicked a field goal in this game. Skirsky gets a foot into it. The freshman from O'Day sends it high into the air, deep into the end zone where it's taken by Utah State. And they will run it out. Once again, a flag on the play. The ball ripped away. It's down at the 16-yard line. And the Huskies have recovered the fumble. Andy Carroll comes out of the pile with it. I think the Huskies have it, but pending the outcome of the penalty here, we'll see. The legal block in the back on the return team. Penalty declined. Washington first and ten. Penalty declined, and the Washington Huskies have it now. First and ten, and the ball marked down there at Utah State 16-yard line. Nice rip out right there, number 25 on the play. We have uh, Anthony Vontour and Carroll. Boy, what a nice little bounce there. Good pickup. Tuyasu Sopo extends on the keep and is thrown down by Lindsey Hassel. Ball marked at the 16, and now they're going to bring it over and mark it at about the 13 yard line. So pick up a two or three on the play. 
different look that time, a little option look from the Huskies. To Yassa Sopo sends Chris Jurgens in motion wide to the left. On the near side, Todd Elstrom, the freshman. And it's Harris in the backfield. Here's the roll, the pitch. Harris will take it, leans ahead, and vaults out of bounds at the four yard line. Donald Deco forced him out inside the five. Great opportunity for the Huskies this afternoon to work out the wrinkles and get some young guys an opportunity. And this man, when healthy, is. Sonny says can be very effective, Jason Harris. Well, he gets upfield. He doesn't dilly dally around. You know, Jason First Harris has had some nagging knee Huskies. problems, but that time you can see he's got that nice little burst. And again, the Huskies showing a little option look, working, getting some work in on that set. Harris, six foot senior, runs a great deal of leadership as well out on the field. The ball marked here at the near hash mark for Tuiasa Sopo. First and goal. And the ball resting officially at the four of Sandy of uh, Utah State. Washington leading 29 to nothing. Marcus turns the handoff. Harris gallops over the middle and is dropped down at about the one foot mark. Donald Deco stands him up at the goal line. See, seems like everybody's getting into the leaping mode, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need to keep your feet, but he, he had to go airborne that time. Very close to getting in over the line. Jason Harris, as I mentioned, likes to just go east and west. He doesn't dilly dally too much. Huskies now second down. Flags flies. They go up the middle. Touchdown, Washington. Looked like a little movement in the interior for the Huskies. Defense. Penalty, decline. <laughs> Penalty decline and the touchdown stands. Now Washington piling it on 35 nothing. Watch Marcus Tuyas to Sopo here. Yeah, Utah State with a quick start, but you're right. Tuyas to Sopo again leaping towards the goal line. All it has to do is break the plane, and Coach Lambright's real happy with that. That was interesting because he took a step back and then moved about two gaps to the right and went off tackle. What you do, Kevin, is that gives your lineman a chance to engage the mm -hmm. defensive man and get some positive yardage and allows him to get in, and that time just enough to get in the end zone. Yeah, that was a good heads up play there. So Marcus Tuyasa Sopo scores a touchdown. Here's the extra point. It's up, and it is good. <laughs> Line drive. Joe Jarzinka getting into this role as the place kicker this afternoon. 36 0 Washington. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. We'll return to Husky Stadium. All oh, the flags are flying again. That's a good sign in a moment. Four plays, 16 yards, and it took him a minute and 33 to do it. Marcus Tuyas to Sopo on a keeper off tackle. There's Marcus over on the sideline having, I suppose, some heat applied to the neck. Quick scoring drives this afternoon. Brock here it is in uniform, but the separated shoulder, they say now, will keep him out of the lineup for about two weeks. So you're looking at that Oregon State game, a possibility for Brock Hewitt, I suppose. Skirsky, the freshman from O'Day. Bangs another one. And that'll drive the receiver back to the four yard line. Trying to make a cut back to the 20. Ball carrier Emmett White slips. And that's where Utah State will begin play. Riley Jensen, the quarterback. Hands off and spinning down for a gain of about two or three on the play is Demario Brown out of Southern California. Todd Johnson there on the play. Johnson has been active unofficially. What do we have Todd up to? Uh, what, four, five sacks? I think it was five, four sacks and eight total sacks the Huskies have enjoyed this afternoon. Are they going to give him four and a half? It gets better, doesn't it? 
Thank God we have a good stat man. Huh, <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, I lose track in a game like this. Jets back to throw. Guns it up in the middle. Hopeful shirts all around the receiver down at the 28 yard line. London McBride is short of the first down by a yard or two. Nigel Burton makes the initial stop on McBride. A few new kids on defense for the Huskies. You got Omar Lowe in there, number 12, out here in coverage. See number 10 just settled down right on a little zone area. London McBride making a grab, but look at all the purple shirts around him, Kevin. He didn't have much time to manipulate any running room. Jensen with a handoff and a give, and uh, the Huskies appear to have flexed a little bit and given up the first down to San Diego State or to uh, Utah State. Here's a handoff now up the middle, and once again, Utah State showing some positive ground gained. Demario Brown stopped by Nick Fainer. He gets an opportunity this afternoon. Well, Fainer, other, a red shirt freshman. Getting some positive yardage down there, Utah State is, and uh, the Huskies playing some new people. One thing that uh, Utah State coaches are probably thinking is let's, let's get some positive yardage on the ground, do some rushing here, run this clock a little bit, and maybe not give the Huskies too much time with, uh, with the ball with too much time on the clock. Here's Jensen with a pass under thrown and a flag flying and Washington's defensive backfield, Ture Butler in coverage on Aaron Jones, the intended receiver. Talking about Utah State's ground efforts and exploits this afternoon. They've been held on 21 carries to just 10 yards gained. While the Huskies conversely 15 carries 56 yards holding on a defense during the forward pass across the line 10 yards automatic first down. Holding on the Huskies as you heard and with a 36 nothing lead and six minutes to go here in the second quarter no one real concerned on the Husky sideline. Utah State at the 46 yard line. Utah State one and four on the year. They lost to Oregon State last week in Logan 2016. They've got Idaho coming up next week, a conference game. I'd like to work out the wrinkles this afternoon. Here's a pass to the near sideline. Jensen lofting it out here to the near side. And Robert Scott showing his disgust as he goes out of bounds, pumping his fist. The ball was well overthrown. Omar Lowe in coverage on the play. Well, Riley Jensen not wanting anybody to catch it. If, uh, if his man wasn't going to get it, he was going to lay it out there far enough so that Omar, Omar Lowe couldn't make a play on it. He had to get rid of the ball a little quicker than he wanted to, actually. The Huskies had a pretty good rush on him, but see young Riley Jensen there in six of nine, not bad completion, but, but only 40 yards. Jensen listed at 6-1, but the people in the sports information office say he's more like about 5-10 or less. He guns a pass over the middle, and this one was up top and off the fingertips of Scott, who is in double coverage down there at the 35-yard line. He's, he's going to be happy when he looks back at the game film, uh, the fact that no Husky went low on him. He was up off his feet, extending for the pass well above the head. Akeem Akbar went up high, and so did uh, Omar Lowe. Well, Riley Jensen had a lot of juice on that ball, but again, if you're going to throw it that high, you've got to give your receiver a chance. You're going to throw it that hard, come down in the body a little bit, and let him have an opportunity to make the catch. Third down and 10 now for Utah State. And the ball resting at their own 46. Jensen back to pass, slants one over here to the near side. That's going to be short of a first down. Rolled down Two, at the 46-yard line by Marcus Hairston was Bucky Orton. Now this is that situation where you leave Riley Jensen in, Kevin. You know, sometimes you know he does punt as well. Yep. And depending on the situation, he'll either run it or punt it. This is the attack punt formation we mentioned earlier. Well, Jensen has a couple of options as he sets up at his own 45-yard line. Fourth down and three. Jensen is in a sort of a modified shotgun formation. He's going to quick kick this one. And it sails out of bounds at about the 20 yard line. They'll mark it at the 21, and that's where the Huskies take over, leading Utah State 36 to nothing. Riley Jensen is talking to the official. 
Huskies did make contact with him, but the official said he may have touched the ball. Jeremiah Farms was back there giving him some pressure. Marcus Tuyasasopo back out on the field. He has rushed for 10 yards, passed for 83, has run for two TDs, and his total yardage is 93. He has been intercepted one time today. Here's a chance for the Huskies to get some yardage on some of these scoring drives. Marcus rolls out left side, throws to Dane Looker, trying to angle by a man, lost the handle on the football, goes back to get it, backtracks to the 15, and is uh, knocked down. Trying to make a move, look or lose the handle on the football. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo, of course, filled in for Brock Hewitt last week and after Brock was knocked out of the football game. So Marcus today gets only a second start of his career. The first start was last year against the Oregon Ducks. In that football game that the Huskies lost 31 to 28. He was effective, 15 of 30, 261 yards and ran for a touchdown. Oregon's got a pretty fair football team, huh? 5 0 against Washington State this afternoon. Here's Toya Sosopo angling a pass here near the side, 35 yard line. That ball slightly underthrown, but very good coverage. That was the difference. Craig Miller there with a hand in on Joe Jarzinka. Craig Miller closing real fast. He is a regular cornerback, but because of uh, Cardi getting hurt, he's had to fill in at safety. And that time you can see the speed. He closed on it extremely well. But Marcus, again, laying it out here. You just need to lay it out just a little bit more. Oh, he's got nice form, doesn't he, Marcus? Yes. I mean, just a beautiful follow through on that football. Throws it effortlessly. Marcus back to throw at the 10. He's going to kind of step up on a bomb. Instead, he'll tuck it and run. 30, 35, 40. Cut back. Knocked down at the 41-yard line. <laughs> I thought he was going to launch a missile, Sonny, the way he set up, leaning back on that back foot, and then he just tucked it and took off. Well, that time, Marcus, you know, that's one thing that worries the opposing coaches when they go up against the Huskies with him at quarterback. Nobody open. He didn't take a chance. Right here, he does a little swivel hips, works outside, and does a really good job. He has one man to beat down here, and you'd think maybe Marcus would uh, <laughs> maybe try and break back, but he didn't have enough room to maneuver. 24-yard pickup for Marcus Tuyasa Sopo, scrambling. Beat the man, Tony Diamato, their big stud on defense. He's rushed for 184 this year and thrown for 188 or better. Here's the handoff. Right side, Harris. Bobbing, weaving, trying to break outside, rolled down behind the line of scrimmage at the 38-yard line. Loss of one or two on the play. Staying with the play was Craig Miller, the free safety. Tony Diamato was there as well, and we have not called his name much at all since the opening of our broadcast. Diamato is the highly touted Butkus Award candidate, the senior in the middle. Look at that. 17 tackles against Colorado. Marcus rolling out left, setting up 35, floats a beauty outside, overthrown to Dane Looker. And it's incomplete. No flags on the play. Well, I beg your pardon, there is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Holding against Washington, the preliminary indication. You got some new linemen in there. You see Rock Nelson playing now for the Huskies. Of course, Ben Cadlitz, who has a old, old relative somewhere. Used to play for Utah State. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Last time the two teams hooked up, 1904. I don't think. I don't. I don't think Holding Ben's on the offense. Ten yards. Repeat the down. I don't think Ben's uh, football legacy dates back quite that <laughs> far. Close, but not that far. Here's Tony Diamato on the play. Well, there's a little bit of a jersey there. Ben Catalyst is trying to slow him down. He was thinking an official. No way they could see that. <laughs> yeah. 341 left here in the second quarter. Huskies lead 36 nothing. Now second and 21 for Washington. The ball resting at the 29. Marcus back to throw, looking right, looking short. Now looking deep. Going to angle a high pass out. Dane Looker caught at 30. Run out of bounds at about the 19-yard line. Dane Looker on the near sideline on the hookup from Marcus Tuyasu Sopo. Craig Miller was chasing Looker down the field. 
Very nice throw from Marcus Tuyasasopo again hooking up with Dane Looker. He has a lot of time. You can see right here that they're going back into his own defense, only rushing four people, laying it up there for his receiver. Man in coverage had fallen down. Looked like Greg White, number two, was the cornerback fell down, and it hadn't been for Craig Miller, it would have been a touchdown with Dane Looker. 51 yards in the air from Tuyasa Sopo to Looker. 36 0 Huskies. First down, they go to work. Tuyasa Sopo rolls out, draws a crowd, flicks a pass out to Jarzinka, took a shot. And bounced out of bounds. Donald Deco, the junior linebacker, with a lick. Well, that's one that certainly should have been caught by Joe Jarzinka, but maybe Joe's thinking about if I drop three, I can kick another field goal. <laughs> <laughs> Second and ten now for Washington. And the ball resting at the 20. Joe says, do anything you want to me, but don't, don't hurt the toe. <laughs> Take your best shot, but don't hurt the toe. <laughs> Miho Austin, the wide receiver here to the near side now for the Huskies. Looker wide left. Here's the handoff. Jason Harris trying to arm wrestle his way down inside the 20 yard line and scoots to the 19. Pick up a one or two on the play. He straight armed Brent Passy, but Passy was able to drag him down. Passy grabbing that foot of Jason Harris. Really wasn't a lot of room to roam out there. Jason Harris made the best of it. Jason getting a lot of reps. Willie Hurst, of course, started at the position. We saw Braxton Clement come in on a two-point conversion. We see a lot of new faces here this afternoon. Marvin Kasim comes into the lineup as Tui Essosopo angles a pass here into the end zone looking for Dane Looker. Looker was trying to spot that ball over his left shoulder, then turn to his right, and that's when he seemed to make contact with the man in coverage, Craig Miller, but no flag thrown at that point but there is back at the line of scrimmage there's two flags i think there's one on utah state and i think tony coates was getting a little shoving match inside there gorgeous afternoon here at husky stadium a lot of sunshine opens up here the lake is just placid and flat and beautiful a lot of boats out on the lake a splash of color all over the lake this afternoon and the battle of the bands here today as high area high school bands are in attendance. Been a lot of penalties this afternoon. There you see the bands. That's always a great time when you get bands from all the local high schools out on the football field. They mark it, march in formation. As long as they don't fight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we have a Prairie View a and High School here. <laughs> Illegal formation on the offense. That penalty's declined. Dead ball foul, personal foul against the offense. That's 15-yard penalty before sound. Did you get all that? I think we got it. I don't, I'm not sure if Coach Lambright understood all that. Bottom line is fourth down and 10 for the Huskies, and the ball resting on their 20. Now they'll mark it off, and it will be... Move back to the 35 yard line. Goes from the 20 to the 35. So it's fourth and 25 now. The ball resting on the 35. And Ryan Fleming will come out to punt from the 50 yard line. Why not go for it? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're on the 35. Uh, Utah State hasn't really mounted anything offensively today. And this does give Fleming an opportunity, though, to see if he can drop this thing in that 10-yard zone, try to settle it in there, put a little backspin on this baby. He's going to pull out Sandwich from the 50, bring it up high, but he got into it a little too hard. It's a spiral that comes down, and down there trying to bring it back in bounds, I believe, was Reggie Davis. He was unable to do so. Again, I, I think we're on the 35-yard line. That's probably the best thing to do. You're not going to rub too much sand in the opponent's face before yeah. halftime. No, that's true. 36 nothing Huskies leading the Aggies, and Utah State will take over. Huskies leading 36 nothing 207 left here in the first half. No surprises today. I thought there might be. I thought it would be a close game, to be honest with you. Jensen angles a pass out to the far sideline and overthrown. But the Husky defense has been just absolutely stifling, and... 
The offense has had great field position all afternoon. Adrian Pearson, the intended wide receiver down there, incomplete. Well, you know, Ron, Ronnie Jensen's had some people open. He's yes, he either is. thrown it too hard, too high, and his receivers have dropped a couple, so they haven't helped him out too much. But they have been open on occasion, and uh, they just Utah State needs to get those and, and make them successful from their side. The Huskies on the other side have, have really played well. They came after him early and really got after him, and a lot of sacks in the first quarter. Huskies leading 36 0. 157 left in the half, and Riley Jensen, the quarterback. A third and 10 deal now. And again, another flag. They used up too much time, I think, yeah. How many penalties on Utah State this afternoon? You know, it's it's one thing to play a superior opponent, and and I, ball. Ball start on the offense. And I think Utah State would grant that to you coming into this game, no question. The Washington had the superior program, the superior talent, but it's another thing. Third down, Eleven penalties, yards 91 yards in a half. I mean, that's <laughs> I don't care who you're playing. That's inexcusable. Well, I saw my young son's grid kid play this morning, and both teams didn't have 11 penalties. That's because the, the dad that was officiating was barely awake. <laughs> Here's Jensen rolling out 10, 15, 20. Gets a nice block down there and rolls across, I believe, for a first down at about the 31-yard line. Jabari Issa was out in the open field trying to make the tackle, and man, did he get chopped. That was Robert Scott, the wide receiver, put a big time block on Issa. And the bells are ringing for Jabari, and he's not answering right now. 36 0, Huskies lead with a minute 48 left in the first half. We'll be back in a moment. Utah State getting shellacked here at Husky Stadium in Seattle. 36 0. Washington leading this 1 and 4 Aggie football team from the Big West Conference. Jensen back to pass, lost the handle on the ball, but it bounced right up to him. And he scrambles out of pressure, but is wrapped up inside his own 30 yard line. Chris Waddell there to make the stop. See Jensen here just losing the handle on it. And last week, Arizona, you know, yeah. Keith Smith picks it up and completes it for a big 18-yard gain. But right here, Roddy Jensen not having anywhere to go. <laughs> Best thing that happened to him right there. Next week, the Huskies will host Cal. Here's Jensen, play action, hands off up the middle. A little draw play. The ball flicked free from Brown, but recovered by Utah State at the 39-yard line with a minute left, Bucky Orton. Picked up the ball after Akeem Akbar was able to pry it free. See, Akeem Akbar is trying to get uh, change his number this week to number nine from five. See how fast he closed. He came from the other side of the field, Kevin, and just ripped it out. It's a great play. Bucky Orton sails in there to grab it. So with 53 seconds left in the first half, the timeout is called. Washington 36, Utah State nothing. And we'll return to the banks of Lake Washington here on this gorgeous autumn afternoon in a moment. Now the Huskies prepping for Cal who came into the weekend three and two on the year. And they're doing it today against Utah State. 36 nothing Washington really hammering the Aggies. Here's Jensen who's been hammered and hammered and knocked down behind his line of scrimmage frequently already today and we're just in the first half Daryl Daniels picks up the Huskies eighth sack of the afternoon and that's in a half folks 42 seconds left in this first half missed tackle a missed block right there 76 for Utah State not being able to handle Mr. Daniels Mr. Daniels does have some speed so he's going to get to that quarterback if he gets the opportunity but right eight sacks today 
Yeah that offensive line of Matt Lance Mike Lindsay. Junior Patutau Ken Watts Ben Holbrook. Well you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you do. You're going to hear about it on Monday. It's kind of interesting the Huskies would call timeout. But they've got a lot of young people and see the coach right there for Utah State Arslanian. Getting an explanation. Joe Jarzinka back to return the punt from his own 35 yard line. And Jerry Arguello will punt from his own 15. Conversation continues between official and coach. Joe on the year has returned uh, 14 punts. An average of, well, that can't be right. An average of 3-9. That's not right. That's not close to being right. <laughs> we'll work on that one. 42 seconds left in the first half. Arguello steps up. Oh, hard rush. Got that one off with Black. And it tumbles down to the 45 yard line. And flags fly at the point of that reception. Anthony Von Tour, I believe, was a man that caught the ball that had been deflected. First down. Now was that Daryl Daniels that blocked the football? Looked like he got a hand on it. I think and so. Bontour was a man that in short coverage actually made the catch and then took the football up to the 27 where it spotted now. First and 10 for the Huskies. Two yes to Sopo back to work. As Reggie Davis over the middle, but he'll throw to the intermediate receivers. Jerkins sprints away from tacklers, muscles to the six yard line, and there he's rolled down. And Reggie Davis deep, and Jerkins was the uh, inside receiver, and Jerkins slanting over the middle makes the catch. Huskies have to hurry, 23 seconds left. The ball marked at the far hash mark. First and goal. Marcus back, slants it, looping it toward the far post. And Dane Looker was unable to get to the point. Good coverage out there. That time by Utah State, Dane Looker, as you said, nowhere to throw the ball. Marcus did the right thing. He just threw it away. So 14 seconds left, second to go. This is the uh, Lady Washington Crew team that won the national championship. All right. Nice looking Sears trophy there. Women's crew, Division One, Two champion, and back to throws to Yessa Super, rolling out left side to Jurgens, trying to make the hard cut, putting game way down he goes, and it was six seconds left. Washington will call a timeout now. This is going to be a third and six, third and three situation, third and goal. And while you could kick a field goal, I suppose, what's the point? It, you probably be better off here to practice your goal line assault. Well, I think the Huskies probably going back to when Utah State punted shouldn't have called timeout. I mean, you're up 36 zip. I mean, <laughs> what are you going to prove? Yeah. You know, I just go in at halftime and regroup and see what you're going to do in the second half. Rick Mallory in there right now with Jim Lambright. But the other side of the coin, too, Kevin, you're looking at now with the clock winding down how do you guys how does the team respond with looking at the clock and then so many seconds to get so many plays in and and you can only do that against live competition sure you can do it in practice but the defense knows what your plays are so perhaps they're just trying to get a little little extra work in when working the clock in this situation former UW quarterback Kerry Conklin out there in discussion with Marcus Turias Sopo. Marcus has had a good afternoon eight for 16 153 yards with one interception through the air he has run for two TDs. 
Mio Austin wide right along with Chris Jerkins wide left Dane Looker the one man is the H back in the backfield that's Harris back to throw two yes football and a bullet passed in over the head of Dane Looker who had been knocked down at the goal line so that will end the first half actually ball sails out of bounds with two seconds on the clock so it was well calculated by the Huskies they'll go two for one with six seconds left on the clock now they get a field goal opportunity from well, this one will be from uh, 20 yards out. Hey, at this point, I think I'd put Jim Skursky in and let him try a field goal. See if he can get himself right and yep. back on the right side. That's true. It'd be better to probably have two guys that are operating back there. Here's Jarzinka back to kick. A boom this one up, and it's good. Joe Jarzinka hits the field goal here. That one earlier, a 35 yarder. And this one about uh, a 20 yarder for Joe Jarzinka. And the Huskies lead here at half 39 to nothing. That's the end of the first half with the Huskies leading big. And that was quite a first half. It saw Marcus Tuyas Sopo rush for a couple of touchdowns. Jason Harris won. Willie Hurst picked up a couple of TDs running as well. And Joe Jarzinka kicked a field goal. Not once, but twice. From 35 and from 20. Jim Skirsky will kick off, and he drives this one high into the air. The ball is batted down, fumbled at the 26-yard line. And it looks like Utah State is able to hang on. Utah State was throttled by the Husky defense. Utah State held a eight yards rushing in the first half. Complete and utter domination by Washington on this Utah State football team that stands one and four on the year. The stats of the first half. About as one sided as you can get. 10 Husky first down, 7 Utah State. 70 yard yards rushing for the Huskies, 153 through the air, total 232 to the 55 of Utah State. And Utah State turning the ball over twice, the Huskies intercepted once. Utah State had nine more minutes in terms of time of possession. But that stat is totally misleading, only because the Huskies, time and time again, getting great field position, oftentimes inside Utah State's 40 yard line to start a drive scored quickly and effectively to Mario Brown the ball carrier for a pickup of one or two on the play as Brock Hewitt warms up over on the sideline we were told that he's about two weeks away however from getting back into the action Sonny yeah I don't expect to see Brock Hewitt today if anything we'll see J.K. Scott a little bit more than Marcus Tuyas Sopo in the second half just on the way here in the third period and back to throw Riley Jensen and he is sacked for the ninth time this afternoon Josh Smith gets him this time and it was Josh's turn to pull Riley Jensen down well Riley Jensen looking to the right side the near side here to throw the football and three Huskies back in coverage on two people and uh, no place to throw it and by that time Mr. Smith is there to greet him. Well, rather than throwing it away, Jensen has taken the sack time and time again this afternoon. Which I suppose is advantageous to them because <laughs> rather than floating the ball into the air for the interception, although this has got to hurt as he is sacked for the tenth time today. Jabari Issa breaks through and he gets into the party and brings Jensen down to the 15-yard line. Boy, the Utah State linemen are barely getting out of their stance when Jabari Issa busts bust through there. Big man's got some quickness. East is just becoming part of the family there. <laughs> He's just, he, he walking right through the front door all the way to the refrigerator, digging out the cold cuts. And he's just like, <laughs> he's just part of the family. Jerry Arguella back to kick, and this time Jerry is set up at his own three. His seventh punt of the day, three times he's kicked from his own end zone. And this one he gets on a wobbly spiral down to Jarzinka at the 40. Joe sets, plants, hard cut. 
uprights himself with a forearm pops up and then is knocked down at the 45 yard line. So Joe uh, picks up about five on the play. Cade Smith down there to make the tackle for Utah State. Now you're ready for some bright new faces. Uh, you're going to see a lot of them here in the second half of the Huskies. Marcus Tuyasasopo was eight for 17 with 153 yards through the air. Two TDs rushing. Dane Looker four catches 85 yards the longest of 51 yard hookup. Miho Austin will get some run. He's wide left. Troy Sopo going to angle a pass back to his left side. Throwing down there in coverage in the incomplete pass. The intended receiver for Washington was Anthony Meisen, who's gained that starting role as the tight end. That was a pretty catchable ball. A little low, but Anthony Meisen's got to come up with those kind of grabs. Meisen won the job primarily because of his ability to block. Reggie Davis was the incumbent. Mio Austin wide near side to the far side looker and Chris Jurgens, the freshman from Olympia in the man in motion. Solo back is Jason Harris. Here's the handoff to Jason wriggles three across the 50 to the 40 yard line and where he's brought down. Harris the senior picks up the first down for the Huskies. Craig Miller makes the stop from his free safety spot along with Donald Deco. It's one of the biggest holes we're going to see or have seen this afternoon. Good blocking, and we talked about Reggie Davis, but right there he had a great block to let Jason Harris have some room to run, pick up the first down. Excellent block out there by Chad Ward as well, 71. Duo set wide to the left side. Harris the one man in backfield. Two yeses up with a give. Jason trying to break it free. Kent. But still able to push his way ahead for a positive gain of about five on the play. Lindsey Hassel knocked it down. Brent Passy lending a hand. UW leading 39 nothing. Next week they take on a Cal team that coming into Saturday's game against USC was three and one. A few hankies on the ground down there. Dane Looker was talking to him and earlier they had called an illegal formation from the Huskies with, uh, with all those receivers out there wide. You know, with Gerald Harris getting hurt, Kevin, they moved uh, Dane Looker out to that flanker position. And Dead ball, personal foul against the defense. Dead ball, personal against the offense. Penalty's offset. <laughs> Did you get all that? Down is two. Sort it all out, and it brings up Husky possession at uh, the Utah State 35 36 yard line leading 39 nothing bathed in sunlight on a gorgeous Saturday afternoon in Seattle. What more could you ask for 1153 left here in the third quarter. So it's a second down and five situation. And Mijo Austin from Los Gatos California wide to the right back double receivers left and right. Elstrom and Looker off to the left. Two yeses up. Looking to angle a pass across the middle. Taken by Jerkins. 20. 15 knocked down at the 13 yard line. Chris Jerkins with a pickup. And that was Jerkins actually lined up in tandem with Looker here to the near side. And a uh, connection of 20 yards between Marcus and Chris Jerkins. Well, with Looker taking uh, Gerald Harris's position at flanker, you've got Chris Jerkins coming in for the routes that Dane Looker normally runs inside like that. And Chris Jerkins coming up with a big grab. Actually, on that play, Tuyasa Sopo had choices. He had uh, looked like Joe Jarzinka was open, and right there he chose Chris Jurgens with a nice grab. Nice catch, four catches for 77 yards today. And I'll tell you, one thing I noticed about these receivers, Chris Jurgens and uh, all those young kids, Todd Elstrom, they're big. They're all yeah. about 6'2", 6'3", over 200 pounds. Yeah, Jurgens is a long, lanky target. He's 6'3", and weighs 210. And Dane Looker, 6'1", and 190. Look at Jurgens. He's lined up in the slot right. Two gets to Sopo, rolling out to Jurgens, makes the catch, leans in at the 10, and is knocked out of bounds. You know what I like about Chris Jurgens is he, you saw in that play, it was a very quick hitter, a nice quick out, five yards or so, but nice grab. You can see the concentration with those hands as he goes up and gets the ball. You got to love that in receiver, Kevin. Instead of letting it come in the shoulder pads all the time. 
Marcus Tuyas is so full. Sends Dane Looker wide out here at the near side. The ball marked at the far hash mark, second and four for the Huskies. Ball resting at the 10 yard line. Harris, the man back. Five seconds on the play clock. Joey Esasopo turns, handoff. Harris wide open, room up the middle, plunges in for the touchdown. Jason Harris once again puts a tally on the board for the Washington Huskies, who lead now 45 to nothing. Harris, a nine yard TD run right up the middle, and Utah State taking the brunt of that collision down there. They had a couple of DBs down in the end zone. Jarzinka to add the extra point. Joe up and in. Jarzinka adds the PAT and the Huskies with a productive afternoon lead 46 to nothing. The Huskies lead Utah State 46 nothing Jason Harris rushes for his second touchdown of the afternoon a nine yard tally Skirsky is on for the kickoff and he drives Utah State into their own end zone Emmett White will take it touch a knee and they'll bring the ball out to the 20 Skirsky getting a bit of that confidence going now Sonny you see that little pat right there from coach Lambright these guys are real proud of this kid coming back you know it's uh. He's really taken a brunt with all the misses last week, but you got to fight through all that stuff. And as kickers know, you, you know, you're a hero one day and the goat the next, so you got to stay up. Utah State's Riley Jensen with a handoff right side. And this Offensive. is Mario Brown hauled down a straight arm into the face mask of Brendan Jones, might be the reason for the flag. That's a good call, Kevin. Well, Utah State's taking the slow walk back to the huddles, mm -hmm. particularly Demario Brown. Boy, they've really hurt themselves down in their own end of the field. Right there, good grab. Brendan stayed with it, but uh, he had no choice. He was hooked up. Well, there's really no need for that. I mean, you're going to straight arm somebody. You usually do it with the palm of your hand, Kevin, and give them that good chuck right at the top of the helmet. And you know, I mean, you got to know with an official standing there, you can't grab his face mask. First, First down, 19 yards to go for Utah State. The ball resting at the 11 yard line. Plenty of time left in this game. 10 58. Utah State trying to endure. Todd Johnson gets a head start on the rush. Jensen steps by one tackler, but then he's mowed down. Mac Tuiaea was there. And I think Mac was the man that made the initial contact on this. The I think we've run out of room on our sack <laughs> chart. Jeff Johnson was there as well. What is that, the 11th sack of the day? This has got to be some kind of school record. But look at this. You know, one thing I've noticed about Riley Jensen, when he drops back, He's facing backwards or looking at the back. He's, he's not looking downfield to see what the coverage is or who's open. And a lot of times, by the time he gets set up, he's, there's, there's no place to throw the football, and he's in trouble. That's the 11th sack officially now for the Huskies this afternoon on Riley Jensen. And there was another penalty. It's now second and 25, Kevin, so there's a motion call. <laughs> oh, my there, goodness. Rob Big Mac of a sack, though. A deuce on the left, single man on the right for Riley. Jensen backs into his own end zone. Throwing out here, intercepted at the 15-yard line. 
He threw that one right into the bread basket of Nigel Burton, I believe. Yep, it was Mighty Mouse that got the pick at the 15. Well, that's what's going to happen. You get sacked that many times, and Riley Jensen found himself with all kinds of time to throw the football, but unfortunately, Nigel Burton was the guy that was open. Luckily, Aaron Jones was in the vicinity. He was able to haul down Nigel. Otherwise, Burton has six. Look, there's nobody in front of him. No, they had him inside out right there, and there's no way that ball was going to get into Aaron Jones. Marcus Tuyasa Sopo remains the quarterback for the Huskies. Back sets, throws, looking end zone, up top, touchdown, Washington! Dane Looker on the receiving end of a beautifully thrown ball to the far side of the end zone. Didn't waste any time on that one. A 15-yard connection between Tuyasa Sopo and Dane Looker. I always love it when a team gets a turnover, Kevin, to go for the throat right now. And that time, Marcus able to hook up with Dane Looker, who made a great catch with his hands in the back of the end zone. Washington leading 52 to nothing with 10-17 left in the third quarter. Jarzinka's extra point is partially deflected, but it rolls through, and it's that kind of afternoon. The PAT is good. Dane Looker, five catches, 100 yards, and a TD this afternoon. Has never really caught a, a football from any other quarterback when you think about it in his football career other than Brock Ewart. In his days at Puyallup High School, they were teammates. Of course, he played high school, or I should say college basketball at Western Washington before transferring here to Washington. What's the difference between the lefty Brock Ewart and a right-handed quarterback in Marcus Tuyasa Sopo? Before uh, I got to college, and I never caught a ball from another person that was a right-handed throw. You know, junior high, high school is always, always a lefty from rock, and the ball does spin different. You know, when you're on deep routes, the ball tails off in different direction. And, uh, and but uh, I think you know, as a receiver, catching the ball from Marcus is, 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 is easy, is an easy pass. You can put it right on you. You know, he's not quite as efficient passer as Brock, but uh, no, he's, he's a great passer. And uh, when he, our offense will continue to operate a little, little less stress in the pass, but we'll still be able to pass him. So the rotation of the football different from the left-hander to the right-hander. Marcus this season, 20 of 43, 289 yards through the air, 84 yards rushing. And that obviously is the biggest difference between he and Brock Ewart, the talents of those two. Well, I think that uh, the quarterbacks will both say that it, the receivers here, especially Dane Looker and Chris Jurgens, that we've seen today, they catch the ball in their hands, Kevin. So it's... You know, I don't, I don't think it matters who's really throwing the football. These guys have to do a great job of concentration and, and using their hands to catch the football. One play, 15 yards, as Sonny says, you go for the juggler after getting that turnover, and then do it in five seconds after the Nigel Burton pick. And the Huskies lead 53 to nothing. Jeff Skursky is on to kick for Washington. And Utah State just trying to get it past the 50. Tony Walker. Is the man back? This ball is booted high into the air to the 30. It goes off the hip pad. The ball is knocked free. It's recovered by Washington. Holy cow! Newsom got under it. The ball went right through his hands, off the hip pad, and into the hands of Curtis Williams, who already today has a partially deflected a uh, a punt. And this time he comes up with the loose ball down there. The Huskies have it. At the 30 yard line, and J.K. Scott, the red shirt freshman from Burroughs High School down in Burbank, California, comes on to lead Washington. Scott, 6'3 and 210. He's a fine looking young man. He's uh, he really turned it on this spring, really got himself to another level, and it's good to see him getting some reps here with a lot of time to play. Scott with the snap, the turn, and the handoff, and Braxton Clement trying to find a track. Off to the left side is snuffed and dropped down behind the line of scrimmage. Ben Cadlitz is in as well now for the Washington Huskies up front on the offensive line. Caleb Smith makes the tackle for Utah State. There's a look at Benny. J.K. Scott's got a fine arm. You see Marcus there done for the day, but J.K. can come in and he's got a real strong arm. He's very accurate and learned to rush a little bit like Marcus on the corners. Scott with a handoff to turn in the give. Braxton Clement trying to muscle his way up to the line of scrimmage. Did 
but knocked down and a shoe came flying a shoe just came flying out of that little conflict there as Clement tried to march ahead. And so Braxton's going to have to go back and get another wheel. <laughs> get that small tube wheel huh? That's right the inflatable. <laughs> Pump that baby up. Well, let's Jason see what Harris comes in to get him Sonny. Third and long let's see if J.K. Scott's got an opportunity to put the ball in the air. Well, he's got Andre Desisure wide to the left. Back to throw as Scott deep drop sets up the screen right side for Jason Harris going to turn the corner. Can he stay in bounds? No. He run out at the 25. That was, a Jason that was Lindsay Hassel chasing Jason Harris out of bounds on the right side after the screen pass. A pickup of uh, five or so on the play. It's going to be fourth and nine. The Huskies going to go for it. Why not? See if Mr. Scott and company can keep the drive alive. Marvin Kasim is wide to the right. Trips to the left. In the shotgun. Scott back. Angles a pass over the middle. Meisen had it in the grasp and then off the fingertips incomplete. Had he made the catch, the Huskies would have had the first down. Well, bad snap, but a nice throw. J.K. Scott being able to get rid of that football very quickly. And Meisen did have an opportunity to make the grab. Pretty right good, here. Pretty that's good a hit, though. Yes, it was, but that's a bad snap, and he was able to get rid of the football. That's going to smart a little bit tomorrow. Yeah, that was a pretty good hit made down there. Just as Meisen was reaching out for the football, pow, he got it right in the numbers. So Utah State stops the Huskies. One of the rare occasions this afternoon, and they will get it rolling at their own 25. Got a new quarterback in there, Logan Galley. And again, motion, man. <laughs> Ken Watts, left guard, Kevin, moving. Well, the Aggies have been guilty of a uh, number of penalties this afternoon, and the culprit in most cases has been one or all members of that offensive line. They'd have a, they've had a very difficult time of coordinating their action. Galley, the quarterback, as Sonny mentioned, is a 6'2 freshman. Play action. Sidearm pass near side. Caught, dropped. Man spun down at the 30. They're going to rule it a complete pass. Robert Scott trying to spin away from the initial interference. Dropped the ball, but came up with it and leans ahead before getting knocked down by Omar Lowe. Kind of a slingshot throw out there. And I don't see any record of this guy throwing a pass so far this season. True freshman Logan Galley. Freshman out of Carlsbad, California. On a second and six deal. From his own 29 yard line. Here's the handoff. Delay and the man rumbling ahead to about the 32 yard line. And that appeared to be John Roberts. And he's met and dropped down there by Jeff Johnson of the Huskies. Well, one thing about the Huskies right now, there's another look 24, Daryl Daniels. We've got a, some speed backers in there right now, albeit young, Kevin, but they're, they're pretty exciting defensive players. And it'd be nice to see them get on track a little bit this afternoon. Daryl Daniels, number 24 in there, getting ready. He's stacked up on the line. The Huskies have four down men, but they, they've got three other guys <laughs> stunning there at the line of scrimmage, and they draw the uh, Utah State <laughs> offensive lineman offside. I tell you, when you're the size of Ben Holbrook at 6'6 and almost 300 pounds, once you start leaning back a little bit, it's hard to stop. Dead ball, ball start, offense, five yard penalty. Huskies had seven guys up front. They were going to bring the house. Oh, oh. 
I just don't quite understand though Sonny when an, uh, when an offensive lineman is set how he can get drawn off. He knows Timer, he can't. 654 and a clock 654. You know you got to focus on the snap count and that only right. I mean you can't react to the defense you're frozen. Well that's true but you take a look at uh, can't make adjustments up front. He's a weak tackle and with all the rush of the Husky defensive front today he just wanted to get a quick start and get out there so nobody can get around and sack his quarterback one more time. Utah State three for 12 in third down situations like this one. Galley rushed, held, spun, and finally knocked down by a gang. Nick Fainer was the first to wrap him up and spin him down. So the Huskies with their 12th sack of the afternoon. And if it's not a school record, it's got to be close to one. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. 616 left in the third period. Well, in past years they've sacked Arizona State a few times at USC. I go, I remember back to the Marinovich days when all he saw was purple. Jerry Arguello fields a low snap, gets up a pretty good punt, bangs it down to the 34. Joe's down there, hard cut, going middle, bouncing outside 50, spun around, dropped at the 42 yard line. Oh, he is just that close, so close from breaking one. Robert Scott brought him down from behind. So the Huskies will have it. J.K. Scott will come on for Washington to lead the offense. Washington leading 53 zip. We'll be back in a moment. Fifty three nothing Washington J.K. Scott into quarterback now for the Washington Huskies. Check at the line he's got Marvin Kassim wide left. Pair of receivers stacked out wide right. Here's the handoff Braxton Clement trying to straight arm his way outside bounces 40 angling along the fourth sideline to about the thirty nine yard line. And run out Braxton Clement out of Oroville Washington. Flag down to Kevin, but right here, Braxton Clement, true freshman, getting outside. And you'll see Andre Dessischer downfield. Now, there's a good stiff arm. Yeah. See how he hit the top yeah. of the helmet? That's what you're going to do if you're going to try and get yourself an advantage. But don't grab the face mask. And, uh, good job. That's by a true freshman. Heads up. Holding on Washington will back him up now. I think he's got the biggest chin strap in the league. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of foam on that strap. Bill <laughs> Knight would love him though. It's, that thing's big enough to score a swoosh. First down, 22. Ball at the 45 for Washington. J.K. Scott, the quarterback, has Clement in the backfield, and he bobbled the handoff. Was he able to get on it? He was. Smothers it. Back at his 41 yard line. Of course, I love it. Young Ben Cadillac turning around. What happened? The center. <laughs> well, new quarterback in there. A lot of times the reps they take in practice. Perhaps Ben Cadillac doesn't snap that much to J.K. Scott right there. Just didn't get a handle on it. Well, the Huskies haven't been in second and 26 in quite a while. So, see if young Scott here can get a couple completions under his belt. Ball resting at the 41. Scott with a handoff and a turn. Clement angling left side. Gets a downfield block from Dessenshire across the 45. Rolled down at the 43 yard line. Good block thrown out there by Andre Dessenshire to free Braxton Clement once he cleared the corner left side. Mario Franklin makes the stop for the Aggies. Boy, it sure didn't look like he was going to get this much yardage on this run, but right here he busted outside it. Avoids the pressure up front right there and then. Dominic Daste trying to get in the in the way, but Andre Dessinger did help him out a little bit, gained some good yardage. Ball at the 44-yard line, so it's third and 11 now for Washington. 
Bob and Hasim wide to the near side. Oh, D'Amato, I think, did he get back in time? He might have drawn the Washington Huskies off sides. Tony D'Amato stepped right into that zone. I know we featured him in the pregame, Kevin, but you know, yeah. prior to this series starting, he had two assisted tackles and one tackle for loss all day. Quite in contrast to. On the defense, five yard penalty, repeat the down. That's a, quite a contrast to the 17 tackles he had against Colorado earlier this year. And he's been bottled up to Motto has. So the penalty is a five yard deal on Utah State. And it leaves a third and six now for J.K. Scott and company with the ball at the Aggie 39. Washington leading 53 to nothing. Four minutes and change left here in the third. Man in motion is Andy Carroll, left to right. The line up in the slot right side. Desi Shearer to his right side. Scott roll out flip left side. Clement trying to angle for the needed six yards is a couple of yards shy of the first down. Josh Manning along with White on the stop for Utah State. Once again Clement ran right out of his shoe. <laughs> He's going to have to throw some tape around that thing. Ryan Fleming is on to punt now for Washington. We'll see if he can get a little air time underneath this punt. He tried it earlier in the first half, but it just got into the end zone. Two punts, 55 the longest, and it averages out to 44 and a half today. Fleming with a nice punt. Just softly lofts it down inside the 10 where it's taken. And a fair catch called for at the nine. That's where the Aggies get started after Tony Walker's reception with Washington leading 53 to nothing. Three minutes left in the third. We'll return in a moment. Welcome back to Husky Stadium. Just a beautiful afternoon with Sunny Six Killer. I'm Kevin Calabro. Sunlight bathes the field here at Husky Stadium. Down in the west end of the field as Galley goes back to throw. Guns a pass here to the 15, but that ball is short hop. They say he trapped it. Rick Brumfield, the intended receiver. Utah State's offense now led by the freshman from Carlsbad, California, Logan Galley. Finally getting some stats on the season. Not a real good pass, not a tight spiral mm. right there. Looked like uh, one yeah. of Kevin Brown's uh, sinking balls in the. Uh... <laughs> Man, was he <laughs> just a dominator the other night. Fantastic. For the Padres. Trips wide left. They send a man in motion here to the near side out of the backfield. Galley double pumps, flings a sidearm pass out there, and that ball well underthrown. That'll bring up a third down deal for Utah State. He had to double pump on that. When he delivered the football, his feet were not going towards the receiver, and consequently, bad things happened, and that time right in the ground. New record for sacks uh, since the stat was officially tabulated. Back in 1982, the old record was 10 against BYU. Back in 1986, 12 sacks today. And a lot of them coming on third down situations. Todd Back Johnson. five of them. Yes, big Todd. I missed that number. How many did Todd have officially today? Was it still four and a half or five and a half? Here's Galley back to throw on third down. Tight spiral, far side, incomplete. Had it been caught. They still would have been a couple yards shy. Adrian Pearson, the intended receiver down there. So they will change up. And once again, Mr. Arguello will go back to that familiar spot down here on the west end yeah, of he, the field. He it's owns all that purple. territory. Well, he's, got, he's got purple wearing off on a uniform. He's been down there so long. Got, got a new return man. We don't have Joe the Toe or. Wandami Davis back there. Kind of running out of nicknames for Joe Jarzinka. That's, that's right. He's shoeless, Joe, right now. He's out. Here's the boot from Arguello. Tight spiral taken by Davis at his own 45. One cut, two cuts. Near side, roped up, dropped down at the 45 yard line. Well, Davis getting some run this afternoon, filling in for the injured cornerback, Jermaine Smith, going back on the specialty teams to receive this punt. See if J.K. can get into a rhythm. Hands off to Braxton Clement. Cut back. Eludes one tackler. Leans ahead to the 40-yard line.
Josh Manning. Clement has good size, 6'1", the 200 true freshman from Oroville High School. Clement with five carries, 23 yards gained on the afternoon. Marvin Kasim, number 13, is wide here to the near side. Clement lines up, offset the H-back position. And a couple of receivers wide right. Scott back to throw, sets and fires a long one. This one angling toward the end zone. Oh! Andre had it and dropped it. That was six points for sure, no question. And Desishur, who's had some difficulty the last couple of years catching the football, looked to be in his senior year turning the corner, Sonny. He's caught some balls this year, had some difficult catches, but this one he just flat dropped. You're absolutely right, Kevin. He had a great spring, really worked hard. Coaches were happy the way he's coming around. Right here, maybe a little bit of the sun, or maybe he looked around, but that was a beautifully thrown football from J.K. Scott. Oh, that was a gorgeous ball. Being a senior, I'm sure Andre wanted to haul that one in. Well, the Huskies set up now, third and five. Here's the handoff, the turn. Scott has to just unload. Great rush there from the right side thrown by Utah State. A little play action number in the rollout, and he, he rolled right to the pressure. Took a little bit too much time. He had Andy Carroll breaking in underneath on an underneath route. And J.K. Scott not having enough time to get rid of the football. There as Dessa Shure comes over to talk to Joran Hooker and Gerald Harris, who is not dressed this afternoon. He took, of course, just a thunderous jolt in that Nebraska game, and there's a chance that Harris could get back by next week. In fact, he had a bruised kidney. Here's the kick from Fleming. And he hangs it high to the 15. And the Huskies give Walker that necessary four yards or so of pad room, and then he's knocked down. 53 nothing. Washington leading Utah State. A minute 42 left in the third. And we'll return with more Husky ball after this. Washington leading 53 to nothing with a minute 42 left third quarter. Here's a ball thrown far side. Trying to turn the corner for something positive is uh, Robert Scott. He is upended and takes one of the Husky attendants down with him. The only... There's the old redhead. He took a shot, didn't he? Yeah. Look at him. He's still smiling, though. I think he dropped one of those bottles. So that's almost a fumble. He's feeling good. He'll get a star slapped on that hat. Practice. <laughs> Bam. That's good form. Yeah, he'll be in for treatment tomorrow. But look, he, <laughs> he held on to the bottle. That's what's amazing about that deal. <laughs> yeah. Here's a left to right running action. And the ball dropped. But they say it was a dead ball before it Got free from Demario Brown. Ooh, he's got scissors in his back pocket. <laughs> See that laugh right there? That kind of semi. Yeah. I think it hurts, but I can't show anybody. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Number nine, Akeem Akbar. He's the one that threw the Utah State player into him. 111 left third quarter back to throws galley sets up long time guns it across complete to the 50 flag down at the 40 yard line Hakeem Akbar makes the stop finally and the flag was thrown back here at the 50 Robert Scott with a hook up from galley well you've got uh, Riley Jensen back in there now oh, Kevin. that's right yep came back in on this series since galley didn't really do anything for Utah State coaches and give Riley Jensen a chance to get a score here. Face mask on the Huskies. Five yard face mask penalty against the defense. That penalty declined. First down. Utah State will decline and they're on the march now with a minute two left here in the third quarter play and see if we can pick it up. Well, I think it's on the left side of the screen. You, you couldn't see it. It was on one of the receivers, I believe. But it was well before the, the ball was thrown. Hakeem Akbar, the freshman, making the stop. And now Utah State, first and 10 at the 40-yard line of Washington. Hard rush. Jensen rolls out to the 45-yard line, flings a pass here to the near sideline. Scott makes the catch with Hakeem Akbar attending him out of bounds. 
That was a great throw. Riley yes, Jensen that time on the run, running full speed and throwing the ball downfield like that. One thing that's good about this is that he gets the shoulders pretty square to the line of scrimmage and fires it out there. And that time, one of his receivers came up with a, with a tough grab. Robert ball marked Scott. it to 26. Robert Scott with a great little catch down there, sliding out of bounds. Trips wide left. Mario Brown, Malone back. He's in motion now, out to the near side. Jensen back, looks to Brown. Swing pass right side, 25-20 to Mario straight arms and is knocked down at the 15. <laughs> Clarinet players have more fun. Well, it's band day. They're just getting into it. That's the Benny Goodman punch right there. <laughs> they got all Benny's records. 53 to nothing. 15 seconds left here in the third period of play. Utah State football. Aggies on the march. Not anymore. 13th sack of the afternoon. As Jensen goes down, this time looked like Marcus Hens uh, uh, Hairston along with Chris Waddell. Actually, it was Chris Waddell making yeah. the stop. Hairston is out. Waddell is in for Marcus. Yeah, Riley Jensen had no chance on that one. He looked up. Chris Waddell in his face. He decided to try and do a Marcus Tuyasa Sopo, but not exactly. <laughs> so, at the end of three, it's Washington 53. The Aggies of Utah State nothing on a gorgeous afternoon here in Seattle. We'll be back in a moment. Well, they're having fun at Husky Stadium this weekend because <laughs> the Huskies are on the giving end of a route. 53 nothing. We head now to the fourth period of play. Special presentation going on down in the end zone. Recognizing number 25, George Fleming. From Hus Husky Day has gone by. There's a look at George. George is a great guy. He's a great ball player here at the UW, that's for sure. Riley Jensen goes to work for the Aggies. Backpedaling, 25, angles a pass, end zone, touchdown! Great pass and a super catch out there by Aaron Jones, who looked to be curling down there near the post. A 17-yard hookup from Jensen to Jones. And I might buffer some of the sting, some of the pain that the Huskies have inflicted on the Aggies this afternoon. That's a great thrown ball. That was an excellent throw. Riley Jensen setting his feet. Everything was going towards the receiver, and it was a great throw. Nice catch out there. Aaron Jones keeping his feet in bound. Aggies look to add the extra point, and the kick is up and is wide left. <laughs> Sails wide left. That is one of the, well, it's the only opportunity Brad Bond has had this afternoon. The ordinarily very dependable Brad Bond sprays this one left. <laughs> and there was some question in his mind. He's still sorting it out with the officials. He thought that ball was through. Well, He's been so good this year, he could barely believe he missed that one. Bond had been perfect in the uh, extra point category this year. In fact, he's hit 12 of 13 field goals this year. Well, Brock Ewart probably won't be available for that game. We were told before the game, it looks like two weeks out before Brock is back in action. Trying to get the separated shoulder. Healthy and ready to roll. And Sonny and I touched on at the beginning of the broadcast. This is a pivotal point for the Huskies who come in at two and two. They've got a Utah State here team this afternoon. They're dominating. They'll go three and two with Cal coming up next week. And they're a three and one football team pending the outcome of their game against USC. And then, of course, you have Oregon State coming in here. And the Huskies have beaten Oregon State something like 20 of the last 21 games. But a much improved Oregon State yep. team this year. Mike Riley's done some good things down there. 
So chance really to rev it back up. Get it going. Get some momentum rolling. Get some kids some experience. And get others mended. Here's the kick. Driven back to the five Jarzinka. Starts up his motor and gets across the 17 before he submarine. Well, I think it's a good time right now for the Huskies. Uh, little Joe, I know, wants to be in there, but it's got a lot of people, I think, on the Husky side that can return kicks. Total yards in that last drive, 86 for Utah State. And you throw that out, and you're left with 48 yards gained through the course of this afternoon's business. J.K. Scott, the quarterback, with a handoff to Braxton Clement. Clement secures the footwear and the football. <laughs> to lean ahead to about the 24-yard line. I think he added a little tape to those shoes. Yeah, that means getting reps, man. I'm, I'll staple those suckers <laughs> to my feet. It means the difference between staying in or playing. We'll have to check and see if Willie Hurst's arm is uh, going to be okay for next week. Yep. Good point. He got dinged up early in the game. Took a shot to that look to be the right bicep. J.K. Scott, second and four. And the handoff will yield a gain of a couple, but shy of the first down. Braxton Clement, all round athlete. It could help Washington at several positions. He had a cousin, James Clifford, who was a starting linebacker on the Husky 91 national team, and Jimmy, a pretty good baseball player as well. Third and two. Here's the handoff right side, and Clement is knocked down. Fifty three to six UW leading clock running 13 minutes remaining here in the fourth and Huskies now are one yard shy of the first down they'll elect to punt Ryan Fleming is back to booted. Well here's a chance for Fleming to uncork one he's got a lot of room to punt the ball here and he has one long one already today his first punt of the day was 55 yards. He's back at the 12 steps up and bangs it from the 16. And he really let the choke out on that one. It's picked up by Walker at the 40 yard line and a flag thrown down there at the point of the reception. I don't think the Huskies gave him enough room down no, there. No, I don't think so. Renard Edwards is down there, I think, in violating Walker's space. Non contact interference foul. Five yards from the spot of the foul. Against the kicking team. First down. No contact, but interference nonetheless. 12.35 left. Fourth quarter play. Huskies lead 53 to 6, and we'll return with more in a moment. 53 to 6. Washington on top by a huge margin, and here's a pass by. Riley Jensen out here to the near side complete. And a tackle made on the play. Aaron Jones was the receiver. And a Husky is limping off the field. It's like Odell George, but Riley Jensen here is honed in on uh, Aaron Jones. Looks like he's given up on everybody else and just said, hey, number nine's catching the ball. I'm going to throw the ball to him. Many Haynes made to stop that time in coverage. He's uh, in now at the cornerback spot. Here's Demario Brown scooting right side. Kenny Walker comes up from behind him to haul him down at about the 40-yard line. Looks like Utah State picks up the first down. They do. Walker from Honolulu, Hawaii. Getting uh, a lot of time. Let's look at Odell George being attended to on the sideline. First and ten for the Aggies. 
53 6. 11 and a half minutes remaining in the ballgame, and a lot of the Husky fans filing out of the stadium. Jensen's going to go solo 30, wrapped up and spun down to about the 31 yard line. And over there after him was Renard Edwards. Nice tackle by Edwards. Settling down there, not letting Mr. Jensen pick up the first down, forcing him out of bounds. Next week, obviously, a conference game and a big one. All those conference games are big. Coming up against Cal, the Cal Golden Bears. Oregon State at home the following weekend and then down to Los Angeles to take on USC. Here's Roberts muscling his way to the 26 yard line. Got a new back in there now, Kevin. Got the Emmett White. Actually, it was Emmett White, yeah. The little brick is in there. Kenny Walker comes up with a stop on the Ogden, Utah freshman Emmett White. Ewart, Tuya Sosopo, J.K. Scott. Marcus had a great afternoon. Rushing for a couple. Scott threw the touchdown pass to Looker. Here's a swing pass left side. Nice little cutback avoidance of the tackle from Renard Edwards. And the receiver down there was London McBride. Well, the best thing on that play is he did stay in bounds. And the clock continues to tick. Ten and a half minutes left. Now look at those two. Joe Jarzinka and Steve Bramwell. Steve returned a lot of kicks here in his old Husky days, and now the team doc. Riley Jensen's completed his last six passes, but he's going to hand off. Emmett scoots to the right side. Emmett White with the carry. He's a good look at Dr. Bramwell. Not a whole lot. For the doctor work on this afternoon. That's good news. Everybody seemed to get out of this thing healthy. Willie Hurst, as we mentioned, had a looked to have a problem with the right bicep, right shoulder. A little bit of pain in it. Discomfort. Emma White, the ball carrier, grinds his way up to the 12 or 13 yard line for another first down for the Aggies. Aggies starting to move the ball now on the third string Washington defense. Yeah, Judd Seed in there, 47, uh, walk on player, getting some PT time this afternoon. That's great. You know, these guys work so hard in practice, Kevin, you never, never hear about them much, but uh, this is a little payoff right now for all that hard work, getting some time in and trying to contribute to the win today. Timeout, Utah State. Timeout, Utah State will step aside with 9.16 left in the game. Washington leading 53 to 6. We'll be back in a moment. Fifty three to six the score with nine sixteen left in the fourth quarter Riley Jensen back to pass flush out of the pocket spun down and dropped Curtis getting there or actually Daryl Daniels with the stop down there. I would probably guess another holding call in Utah State where the flag was thrown. Yeah sixty seven <laughs> Utah State making a nice tackle. Jess Shuck. Offside on the defense. Holding on the offense. Penalty's offset. Repeat the down. Offsetting penalties 53 6. They're going to repeat the down. Daryl Daniels with a stop. Will not count as a sack. 9.08 left here in the ballgame. The Huskies have already put together a team record, school record, 12 sacks today against Utah State. Huskies up by 47 big ones. Nine minutes left in the ball game, and Riley Jensen again approaches the line of scrimmage apprehensively. 
Wide receivers to the right. Pump fake, steps up, scrambling out of the pocket, knocked down. Coming over to get him, Kenny Walker from the far side. Nice close by Kenny Walker. Showed a little speed on that play. Walker, the walk on from Honolulu, Hawaii. Make great gains in the weight room. Really muscled up. Emmett White. And really improved his speed, too, Kevin. That's what's really got the coaches going on him. White with a handoff. Rams right into Walker. And Kenny just ran him back and dropped him down. The Skywalker with a big shot. That's the way you like to see your linebackers attack that ball carrier. Helmet right on the numbers. You'll see him come in on the left side here. Knock the blocker down on the ground and just stick that headgear right in there. That's a great job. Hops out of there with a little dance, too. You know, Utah State has had 15 first downs this afternoon. Huskies with 14. Here's Jensen rolling right, pitching one out near the end zone. It is taken at the goal line and run out of bounds. They're going to rule that a complete pass. London McBride caught it in bounds, but there's a flag on the play back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that time it looked like again Mike Lindsay 57. Look on the right side here, see 57 if he gets a little hold here. 57 and 62. He gets a lot of hold. He gets a whole lot of hold. Matt Lance Holding making a tackle. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. They must keep uh, stats on the linemen making tackles for Utah State. They've done it several times today. <laughs> That's too bad because that was a nice throw again by Riley Jensen. Yes, it was. A very positive big gainer for the Utah State Aggies, but unfortunately, another flag. Yeah, that'll that'll bring up a third down situation. Ball on the 27. Third and 23. Clock running. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Jensen back. Forced to run with it. Rolling out right. Oh. Throwing. Ball deflected. And nearly picked up by Daryl Daniels. I think he knocked him out, Kevin. There's a man down on the play, Aggie player down at the 35 yard line in front of the Washington bench. Yeah, it looked like Ken Walker came in, got underneath that face mask, got him right on the old chin strap. Let's see. Yeah, he tucked that helmet and got it in there. Well after the ball was delivered. Well, Walker's got paint all over that helmet. He's been busy. 726 left in the ball game 53 to 6 as they attend to Riley Jensen will return in a moment. 53 to 6 the score with 726 left in the fourth quarter Riley Jensen after taking a hard shot by Kenny Walker the helmet up under the chin strap is walked over to the Utah State bench. Galley is the quarterback. The handoff up the middle and Emmett Brown. Emmett White spins down to the five yard line. It looks like Riley Jensen's going to be all right. They're giving him some smelling salts down there in front of the uh, bench. And yeah, but he won't remember the plane ride home. No. <laughs> Rushing yards allowed. Season average 191. That's ninth in the Pac 10. Not good. This game, the Huskies have held Utah State to 42 yards. Well, you need those games to offset the Nebraska yardage. Yes, you do. Cal played Nebraska very, very well, held them under 30 points. But remember, that game was played at Berkeley, and the game was played without Nebraska's great tandem of Bobby Newcomb and D'Angelo Evans. They were both out of that game, didn't play. Here's a handoff up the middle, and Emmett White trying to Grind his way across the five does down to the three yard line. Come on, come on, 
Cow will be here next weekend. Muli Tao Opele with the stop, the big man from Walla Walla Community College, and of course grew up right here in Seattle. Young man's been working real hard. Yeah. There you go, Kevin. Utah State, five and twenty-seven against current Pac-10 team. The Huskies have won 15 straight against Cal and have won 20 of the last 21 against Oregon State. That's why we say the next three games. Including today's contest. So important for the Huskies to get back on the good foot. They could go to conceivably go to five and two with that game played at USC on the 31st, being a big one. Delay of game. Another flag. How many penalties today? Dead ball. Delay of the game. That's gotta be their 20th penalty. Well, let's ask Ryan Church. I was close. 19 for 159 yards. Whew. And remember the Huskies have declined at least two in this game. <laughs> Six ten left here in the fourth. Nebraska was beaten today. Yep. Texas A&M was it? At yes. home. At home. Well some other Aggies are going to be very happy today. Here's a handoff scooting around the left side is Emmett. White and he is gang tackled, brought down. The ball jarred free and out of bounds. Great pursuit by the Huskies. I thought, I thought he had the angle and had enough room to turn the corner for the TD. Larry Haynes closed the gap quickly. Some of that young speed on that defensive side for the Huskies. Right here, you see Lenny, 22. Ball forward out of bounds. So they return the spot of fumble. Getting the hold of the the, the Aggie right here. Lenny Haynes with a lot of pride in that stop. defense Kevin you see the the ones and twos on the sideline yelling encouragement to the young dogs out there right now. Here's a handoff and Emmett White charging up the middle to the goal line did he have enough to get over. I don't nope. think he did see the linesman right there pointing down the ground. Half a football. We'll see if the Aggies can get this playoff without a penalty, Kevin. <laughs> That's what's hurt them a few times down in this part of the, the field. 53 to 6 to score with five minutes remaining. Clock ticking. Galley, the quarterback, the handoff to White. He's going to walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Utah State. And Brad Bond will come on for the extra point now. Or will they go for two? Might as well go for two. I think they will. They've got to get ready for a game next week against Idaho, which is a conference game. And after the loss here today, Utah State will stand one and five on the year. Playing a tough Idaho team coached by Chris Tormey, the ex UW assistant over there, has done a fine job the last few years. And it's going to be a tough game for Utah State to rally, get up for. Utah State's only win this year was against Sam Houston State, beat them 47 to 17. Back to throw, angling near side. That ball caught and juggled, incomplete. Galley threw a nice soft pass out there. Robert Scott but he couldn't handle it 53 to 12 the score 455 left in the game and the Huskies will get it again when we return in a moment. Fifty three to twelve the score the Huskies manhandling Utah State with 455 left in the fourth quarter from Husky Stadium along with Sonny six killer Kevin Calabro. Here's the boot way back taken at the 15 yard line. Turi Butler down the left side and racked up at uh, just shy of the 30. Marcus Tuyasu Sopo had a great afternoon today, leading the Huskies, his second career start as a Husky. Started last year against Oregon, and he is our Pepsi MVP. His ability to throw the football obviously scrambled with a smile on his face. Look at that. Great vision. <laughs> 
And he's thrown the ball well. 11 for 21, 194 yards, one TD, two rushing touchdowns. And I think he's, he's done away with the natural, hadn't he? Yeah, it's, uh, that's an old look for him yeah. right there. He's got that new style going. He's got that clean side. But the fade happening now, huh? Yep. Well, the Huskies are reshuffling and they're giving everybody an opportunity to get in there and get rolling. That was, uh, I believe, Jelani, no, Jabari Johnson. Jabari Johnson, the freshman from Tempe, Arizona, with the carry that time. Militich is the quarterback, so we've gone four deep at that position. And here's the handoff running off the right tackle. Another walk on Brian Cook, Kevin. Cook. Hey, I think it's great. You know, these yeah. every program seems to have a few games like this, except for the Huskies in recent years. And Ryan Militic out of Vancouver, Washington, the quarterback now. He's the holder, obviously, on special teams for the kicks. He is the senior. And he'll bring him up with 336 left here in the fourth on a third down and 12. <laughs> and men jump offside, man. The Husky linemen were firing out that time. Zach McCall, I believe, was that ball. offside. On the offense. Huskies 53 to 12 today with 329 left in the ball game. Rested Brock Ewart, Jermaine Smith was out, Gerald Harris was out as well. So you get another couple of weeks for those people to mend. Here's a handoff left side, big gain up to the 35, nearly to the 40 yard line. And John Hart carrying the bread that time. Hart from Lake Washington High School in Kirkland, the redshirt freshman. <laughs> Getting a little ramble time. He looked pretty good on this play, Kevin. Oh, just that. <laughs> With the big man in the backfield, was he lined? I guess he was lined up at the H back. Yeah, he was a little. Yeah. May have found maybe a, another fullback opportunity there. That's Randy Hart's son. Randy Hart, the linebacking coach. Well, now I know where that play came from. Oh, the Huskies, and boy, they're, they're pumped up about that one. That's probably more ground uh, than his old man gained at Ohio State because <laughs> Randy, of course, was a great linebacker on some tremendous Ohio State teams. Played for Woody Hayes. Here's the punt taken back at the 20-yard line and knocked down. Tony Walker, the man who was knocked to the floor, the surface. The 219 left here in the ballgame. The score, the Huskies 53, and the Aggies 12. We'll be right back in a moment. Well, no surprises in this game. Other than the fact that Joe Jarzinka really can kick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he had been booming him in practice, but that's one thing. I mean, you yep. can get up on that driving range and you'll hit some good shots. Boy, you head on down to Sahali or your nearest golf course, forget it. But uh, Joe was able to convert it You're here right. this afternoon. I left some of my best shots on that driving range. <laughs> See a big number six on a ball, you know who banged it into the bushes. <laughs> 53 to 12 count, a minute 52 left in the game. Galley trying to avoid the rush, scoots out to the far side and he's dragged down out of bounds for no appreciable gain. Good pursuit that time. And yeah, that was big old number 90, Nick Fainer firing out there from his down position. Nick is a freshman from Walla Walla, Washington. <clears throat> got Judd Seed out there, a, kind of got racked up a little bit, didn't want to come out of the game, but the, the Husky trainers had to drag him off the field. You know, he had 28 lettermen that uh, graduated from last year's team. It's, I think, six starters on both sides of the football from last year's ball club. Ten went on to the pros. Here's a breakout to the 40 yard line scrambling out there was John Roberts for the game for Utah State. 
Point being, you lost a lot out of the cupboard last year from this program. But, well, a lot of the numbers and names we've read this afternoon are freshmen, and uh, they are good freshmen. They're good ball players. No That's question. A good future, I think, for the program. So after getting clobbered by Nebraska and losing a heartbreaker last weekend on that that last minute and a half drive by Arizona the Huskies bounce back for the big win here this afternoon flushed out of the pocket and rolling his galley finds a man downfield but the pass is incomplete in and out of the arms of Artavius Tompkins. Boy they've had a few of those this afternoon though. Mm -hmm. you know the quarterbacks have been on the money a few times and the receiver just haven't responded with the grab and. Well they just announced the halftime score of Oregon State leading Washington State 38 to 7 at half. That's in Pullman. That's how good the Ducks are this year. Yeah. I know a lot of people that went over for that game and uh, <laughs> I wonder if they're still there. Ducks big linebacker Sermon is out. He was hurt last week. That would be I guess the only downside of the Ducks this year is their, their suspect defense they've given up some points but their offense is for they high powered just offsets any kind of deficiency on the other side of the football Dan Conley the Utah State big tight end made a catch but juggled the football away and the Huskies Willis dives on the football so Jamon Willis. Jumping on the ball gives it back to Washington at their own 30 yard line with a minute eight left in the ball game. 53 to 12 is their score. Militich the quarterback. A turn in the handoff and it's hard again. John muscles his way across the 32 yard line. Got that good fullback number. <laughs> 83 yes. <laughs> <laughs> Art is a freshman from uh, Kirkland, Washington, as we mentioned, Lake Washington High School. His mother is a kindergarten teacher and a good one. <laughs> there was an Emily Dickinson out there in Redmond. <laughs> and I, a good one. I uh, like that. She was a good one. Yeah, our kids had very positive experiences <laughs> All right. in Mrs. Hart's class. And here's a given a march off tackle left side. And, Trying to muscle his way up front was Jabari Johnson. Loss of about one. They're going to let the clock tick down here. So Washington will win this one to go three and two on the year. They've got Oregon State next weekend here at home. Or I should say Cal next weekend. The following weekend, Oregon State, and then on the road on the 31st to meet USC. And for Jim Lambright and company. They got on it early, took the, uh, any kind of suspense out of this game. Didn't allow the Aggies any kind of early confidence at all and just throttled the outmanned Utah State program this afternoon. 53 12, our final score. And what about Marcus Tuyas Sopo's effort this afternoon, Sonny? He just gets better and better, doesn't he? Oh, it's a lot of fun to watch. He creates a lot of problems for any defense that comes in. Big day for Marcus and company. The final score once again, Washington 53 and the Aggies 12. For Sunday Six Killer, I'm Kevin Calabro saying so long. <laughs>